Hello and welcome back to my channel, Deku Fanfic. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the second part of our series, What If Deku Was Father and Teacher? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Massasin Maze from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Chapter 5, Encounter Another normal Monday morning at the Peace Peace Symbol House, or at least that's what it would be if it weren't an important day for her daughter. Yes, finally, finally, the day when Iri would start going to nursery had arrived, arrived, and at this moment, moment, Izuku was preparing her daughter on a sofa in the living room. Izuku was already dressed for work, work, and in on top of his lap sat Iri, Iri, who was brushing her beautiful hair. She was dressed in the pretty red boots Hawks gave her, black knee-length stockings, a skirt with white straps below the knees, and a red long-sleeved shirt, plus her necklace with the green charm. The tender little girl had her eyes closed and smiled, smiled, enjoying the way her father brushed her hair. H-E-H-E -E was always careful and did it delicately so as not to hurt her. Minutes later, the green-haired man stopped and then calmly placed Yuri on the ground. That's it, you're ready, Izuku told her daughter with a faint, faint, calm smile, smile, and then Yuri turned around excitedly to inspect herself and the way she looked. Then he returned to her father and placed her hands behind his back. Do I look good, daddy? Asked the albino with an innocent and pure smile that caused the peace symbol to look at him paternally. You are the prettiest girl in the world, princess, Izuku replied affectionately, firmly believing that what she said was true and was a universal law, her daughter is the prettiest in the world. Iri felt happy and raised her arms in the air. Let's go now, daddy, I don't want to be late. She said this said this to Izuku excitedly, then grabbed his hand and began to pull him off the couch. Relax, relax, Iri. Remember, remember that I woke you up early just to avoid that. For for now, now, let's have breakfast, okay. Izuku said to her daughter calmly while placing a hand on Iri's head that she thought for a few seconds to accept. But first, added the green-haired man, taking a few steps away from Iri as he took his phone out of one of the pockets of his dressing gown. What are you doing, daddy? Iri asked her father curiously, tilting her head slightly to the side when she saw that he was pointing the phone at her. I'm going to take a picture of you. Grandma asked me to send it to her, her, and maybe Uncle Hawks will be happy to see that you are still wearing the boots he gave you. Izuku replied with a small friendly smile, smile, looking at his daughter and then turning his attention to the phone screen. I also want to have a memory of your first day at daycare, the green-haired man added affectionately. Affectionately. H-E-H-E -H -E then saw how his daughter smiled at the camera and took the photo that, that, at another time, time, he would make sure to include in her album. Now let's eat so we're not late, daddy. Here he said, here he said, here to Izuku happily, receiving a nod from the eldest, eldest, and then they both went to the dining room. Sometime later, later, we found father and daughter walking hand in hand through the empty corridors of UAUA since, since, at that time, time, there were still no students circulating around the academy. The little girl, who was now carrying the purse her father bought her, watched in amazement at the clean, spacious corridor through which they walked, while Izuku just watched the road serenely. Is this where you work, daddy? Hiri asked Izuku as she looked up to see him curiously catching his attention. Right, I teach class 3 specifically, Izuku said calmly, calmly, and his daughter nodded, nodded, making sure she remembered that fact. Anyway, let's see Principal Nezu before we take you to the nursery, he added calmly, heading in the direction of the principal's office, office, where the little animal had summoned him. Principal Nezu, is he Pappy's boss? Asked Iri, intrigued and with a finger on her chin as she continued to look curiously at her father. At that moment, moment, they both arrived in front of the large wooden doors that were the entrance to Director Nezu's office. Right, now please keep quiet while I talk to him, okay. Izuku said to Iri with a faint, faint, calm smile, smile, receiving a nod from a smiling Iri who clutched her little hand closer to her father's. Izuku opens one of the doors, doors, and then both he and Iri enter the office to meet Aizawa, Midnight, Present Mike, Mike, and Vlad King, King, who were also there, there, in addition to Principal Nezu, Nezu, who was sitting behind his desk. Uh, what's going on here? Was was there a meeting, meeting, and I didn't hear about it? Asked Izuku, intrigued by the presence of his fellow professors in that place as he and Iri approached the center of the office. Good morning, morning, Midoriya, don't worry, worry, this is just a small introduction, Nezu said to hero number one with a small, small, calm smile. Introduction, asked Izuku, confused and raising an eyebrow without understanding what the director meant. The director wanted to call us here so that these curious people here could meet Iri. That's all, Aizawa clarified serenely as he looked at Izuku while pointing at the rest with a thumb. Iri, looking at the black-haired man, looked excited and smiled broadly. Uncle Aizawa, exclaimed the little girl, happy to see the man, and then ran to Aizawa and hugged one of his legs. Aizawa smiled slightly as he looked at the little girl. Hello, hello, Iri, he replied, bending down a little to rub the head of the girl to whom he had become somewhat attached after seeing her so many times, times, to the point where she began to call him that. Look, there's a child in this world that Aizawa didn't frighten, exclaimed Mike, Mike, surprised and with a hand on his chest, chest, exaggerating his impressions a little. 
After after all, all, his friend didn't have a good reputation with children, neither the young nor the adults. He didn't have a good reputation, period. She's too cute, exclaimed Nimiri. Nimiri, excited and touched by how adorable Iri looks dressed in her beautiful red and white clothes that match match her eye and hair color. ITIT is the first time she sees the girl, girl, and without a doubt she received a pleasant surprise. I didn't expect to see Aizawa smile again after their wedding, Ken remarked with his arms folded and smiling a little mockingly as he watched his rival, rival, who refrained from looking at him in a threatening manner because Iri was present. Is that the only reason she asked me to bring her? Asked Izuku. Izuku, looking at the director, because if he had said so, so, he would have introduced her to his colleagues at a more appropriate time. Nezu narrowed his eyes a little and crossed his fingers with some seriousness. No, I also have to explicitly check if it's safe to put her together with other children her age because of her quirk work, the principal said professionally, professionally, as he had to worry about the safety of the other children. Izuku understood Nezu's concern and smiled calmly. No problem in that aspect, as you know, no, she manifested her quirk quirk rewind when she was one year old, old, causing her biological father to be returned to a state before she was born, which caused Kaichisaki to plan to execute the project off substances to substances to erase quirks quirks based on his blood, said the green-haired man, man, calmly watching the small animal while they were heard by Nimiri, Mike, Mike, and Ken, while Aizawa took Iri a little way away so that the little girl wouldn't hear anything. I remember, you informed me that apparently he can only use it on living organisms and that he has no control over it, Nezu said, recalling the information he received several months ago when he learned of the existence of the girl and her identity as the adopted daughter of the green-haired man. Right, but that was before I adopted her, due to certain circumstances, circumstances, she has learned to control it and use it in a non-harmful or dangerous way, Izuku continued calmly, his hands in his pockets creating intrigue in his colleagues, certain circumstances, asked Ken, intrigued by what the green-haired man had said, let me show you, Izuku said, smiling slightly, and then went over to Nezu's desk to pick up a pair of scissors that were on it. Then he placed the edge of the scissors in his right hand to make a superficial cut from which blood began to come out, which threw the teachers off a bit. What are you doing, Midoriya Kun? Midnight asked her former student worriedly, approaching him to inspect his hand, but she noticed that he remained calm and, and, with his eyes, eyes, told her that he was fine and not to worry, so Nimiri gave him his space to see what he was planning to do. Izuku turns in the direction of Iri and Aizawa and crouches down. Iri, can you help me? I hurt my hand, he says to his daughter with a small smile as he shows the cut on the palm of his hand from which blood was coming out. The albino, upon hearing her father, turns to look at him and is surprised to see his injured hand. Oh no, daddy's hand. Iri, worried and a little frightened by her father, quickly approached Izuku and held his hand with her two little hands to inspect his wound. The symbol of peace looked with affection at the little girl who looked at his wounded hand with concern and delicacy. Even even so, so, that did not take away from the fact that she was the most adorable little girl to worry about him in that way. Who is the greatest hero of all, all, and such a cut was nothing. Don't worry, worry, daddy, because I'm here, exclaimed Iri with a dazzling smile, smile, seeing her father's face imitating her phrase and then closing her eyes and eyes and concentrating on using her quirk quirk. After that, the tiny horn of his forehead began to grow and extend to a certain point where he began to release small yellow rays that traveled from his head to his little hands that held Izuku's wounded hand to return it to a state before being injured, as there was no cut or trace of blood. Wow, amazing, amazing exclaimed Mike in amazement, amazement, seeing the effectiveness of the quirk quirk of the girl who deactivated it, it, and its horn became tiny again and the yellow rays disappeared. Izuku calmly looked at her hand to see that it was indeed unharmed, unharmed, and then turned to look at Iri. Thank you, you, princess, I'm healed thanks to you, said the green-haired man, smiling affectionately, closing his eyes, eyes, and then caressing his daughter's head. I'm always going to take care of daddy, exclaimed Iri very happily, extending her little arms towards her father, father, who was deeply happy with her words. Words, H-E-H-E -E carried his daughter in his arms and then stood up and saw his colleagues. Can I eat her with kisses? Asked Nimiri, Nimiri, looking at Izuku with a pleading expression. After after all, all, it's the normal reaction to seeing a girl as adorable and cuddly as Iri is. Iri looked at her father curiously. Who are they, daddy? She asked Izuku as she pointed to the adults she didn't know. They're my co-workers, Mike San, Ken San, Ken San, and Nimiri San, Izuku replied with a slight smile, smile, seeing Iri, Iri, who nodded, nodded, remembering those names, names, and then she turned to look at her father's co-workers. My name is Iri Midoriya, it's a pleasure to meet you. Iri introduced herself in a very sweet and tender way while educating and then bowing her head a little respectfully to Nimiri, Mike, Mike, and Ken, Ken, who put their hands to their hearts before a sudden attack of sweetness in their systems. Well, from what you've shown me, I can see that everything is under control, Nezu said, noticeably pleased to see that the girl would be okay as he stood up in his chair. With that said, I'm glad to welcome the daughter of the symbol of peace, added the little director, looking at the little girl who was in her father's arms. Iri stared at Nezu for a few seconds and then looked at Izuku. What is that animal? Asked Iri intriguedly, and then she then she turned to see her uncle Aizawa asking him the same question. 
Izuku smiled, smiled, amused at the little girl's question. He's director Nezu, he replied calmly, and she looked confused. Is that little animal daddy's boss? Asked the girl, girl, intrigued and somewhat surprised, causing Nezu to swell a vein in his forehead. Sorry, sorry, Hiri, but this little animal has a higher IQ than all those present in these facilities. Nezu said with an innocent smile that hit a slightly sinister air that caused the other adults to have beads of sweat on the back of their necks. Well, actually, actually, Miss Seiko and Telly can compete against you in IQ if she uses her quirk quirk, Izuku argued calmly, calmly, looking at his boss and former teacher. After after all, all, he had seen the records of his students' quirks, quirks, and the silver-haired girls was one of the ones that caught his attention the most. Stop, I doubt he knows its IQ, Mimiri told them both to stop the conversation that the little girl wouldn't understand. IQ is a person's IQ, right. Harry said Harry said with a finger on her chin in innocence, causing those present except for Izuku to be surprised. How does she know that? Asked the heroine in amazement, amazement, seeing the little girl while the rest also asked her. ITIT -it was not normal for a five-year-old girl to know about that. Izuku smiled in amusement at the reaction of his colleagues and then turned to look at Iri, who also turned to look at him. She's my little genius, replied his daughter's affectionate, affectionate, proud father, walking up to her to rub her cheeks, causing Iri to laugh in amusement. Hey, hi, do you stop daddy, I don't want to be late for daycare, said Iri, Iri, laughing sweetly as she tried to push away her dad, dad, who was tickling her. The other adults watched the scene touched by the moment father and daughter, although specifically Nimiri saw enraptured how Izuku was a first-class father whom she wanted for herself, that way she could also take care of Iri as her daughter, great double prize. I see that Iri is excited, I won't hold you anymore, you can leave, Nezu told Izuku with a friendly smile, receiving a nod from Izuku. Izuku, who left his daughter on the ground, ground, and then they both started walking in the direction of the exit. See you later, Midorias. Mike said Mike said goodbye with a big smile from Izuku, Izuku, and Iri received received a small gesture from Izuku in response, response, while Iri said goodbye with a raised hand. Goodbye Uncle Aizawa, goodbye friends, friends, and daddy's boss. Harry said goodbye to the professionals with an innocent smile, smile, and then father and daughter left the office, closing the door on their way out, leaving the adults in a small silence. She's really a special girl, huh? Mike said happily, turning to look at his colleagues and friends. To return someone to a previous state, a terrifying power, Cam remarked with his arms folded and thinking about the danger and potential that the girl represented with a quirk quirk of that nature. We don't have to worry if he has the number one hero as a full-time father, Aizawa said nonchalantly, scratching his head and then yawning. After after all, all, they should only rely on their peace symbol to handle the situation. And soon I'll be his full-time mother, exclaimed Nimiri with a smile and a determined look as she placed her hands on her waist. Waist, clearly determined to do what she said, which caused the men to wish the green-haired man luck. Minutes later, Izuku and Iri were walking across the campus in the direction of the nursery, which had been built in a place somewhat removed from the buildings that were concurrent among the students, so that both the children and the students would have their own environment without having to meet each other. They walked hand in hand, hand, chatting quietly, quietly, until they both managed to see the building, building, which which consisted of a large one-story structure and modern design with white walls and in sliding paper doors at the entrance added to the ngawas that surrounded the place. It was, it was undoubtedly a beautiful place that inside would have children's decorations for the comfort of children. The nursery had letters on its roof that read, Little Heroes. I didn't expect it to be so pretty, although I should have expected something like that from Yui, Izuku said to himself serenely as he saw the place while Iri pulled her hand to catch his attention. Look, look, daddy, other kids, Iri said excitedly as she pointed to a group of adults and children standing in front of the entrance that was closed. Then father and daughter approached the group, group, who, upon noticing their presence, focused on the newcomers, causing a slight a slight surprise in the adults and much more in the infants, infants, who identified the green-haired man who was in front of them as, as the symbol of peace, the hero Deku. Good morning, Izuku said to the other parents with a small, small, polite smile before a man and a woman approached him. The man appears to be in his 35 seconds, his hair is jet tousled, tousled, and he wears a black suit, a black tie, a bright gray t-shirt, and t-shirt, and a black tail jacket down to his ankles. He also he also wears black pants along with shoes of the same color that make him look elegant. The woman next to him has fine and delicate features, long and straight snow white hair, red eyes, is thin, wears a beautiful white dress with gold decorations that expose expose her shoulders and descend descend to her ankles, and and also wears beautiful white slippers. Good morning, I didn't expect to meet the peace symbol like this, the man said to Izuku with a small smile, smile, while next to him, him, the woman made a small polite bow to the green hair. My name is Irisfield von Einsburn, Einsburn, and this is my husband, husband, Kiritsugu Emiya. ITIT is a pleasure to meet the best hero in the world. Irisfield introduced herself with a kind and gentle attitude, attitude, while Kiritsugu next to her shook Izuku's hand. I can assume she's a foreigner by name, Izuku said calmly, and in the same way, way, he received a nod from Irisfield so that two infants could then stand in the middle of the couple. 
The boy had reddish hair with yellowish-brown eyes. Is Ofa fair a fair complexion? Complexion? And wears black pants, simple sneakers, sneakers, and a mostly white shirt except for the sleeves, sleeves, which are blue. The girl has fair skin, blue eyes, eyes, and beautiful golden blonde hair styled in a refined way, way. In addition to wearing a blue dress with white details down to the knees and black boots up to the calves. This is our son Shiru Emiya, Emiya, and this one here is our daughter Artoria Pendragon, Kiritsugu said calmly, placing his hands on the heads of his son and adopted daughter, daughter, who had their sights set on hero number one. Oh, like Arthur Pendragon, the king who wielded the legendary Excalibur, Izuku said, said, smiling kindly at the blonde girl, girl, who remained calm and nodded with a small smile. Nice to meet you, Mr. Deku, Artoria said politely and respectfully to the green-haired man she considered her idol and role model. Wow, it's the hero Deku, the greatest hero of justice, exclaimed Shiru in amazement and with eyes full of illusion when he saw the symbol of peace in front of him. After that, a man with red hair down to his neck approached Izuku, Izuku, accompanied by a small blonde girl. The blue-eyed man was dressed in a black suit with a jacket, pants, pants, and elegant shoes of the same color, his shirt under the jacket is gray, and he has a black tie in the shape of a cross. The girl, on the other hand, has olive green eyes, and eyes, and her blonde hair has an ash hue, using it as two pigtails on the sides of her head. She wears black shoes, white tights, a red and black plaid skirt, a white long sleeve shirt, shirt, and a black coat with a train. Nice to meet you, you, Hiro Deku. MYMY name is Spirit Albarn, Albarn, and this is my dear little daughter, daughter, Maka Albarn. Spirit introduced himself calmly, calmly, followed by introducing his daughter with emotion while the little girl approached until she was in front of the green, haired man to look at him with a smile. It's really an honor to meet you in person, Mr. Deku, Maka said with clear enthusiasm and joy in his eyes, and then made a slight respectful bow to his favorite hero. This brat here is Sol Evans, Spirit added with annoyance, as beside him came a boy with white hair with slicked back ends, red eyes, eyes, and sharp teeth, a red bandage on his forehead that says Eater, a yellow shirt, a black turtleneck jacket, dark pants, pants, and red shoes. You're so cool, exclaimed Sol with a sideways smile, smile, showing his sharp teeth as he looked admiringly at Izuku, Izuku, who smiled in amusement at the boy's excitement. His mother asked me to bring him with me, Spirit said in annoyance as she scratched scratched the back of her neck, neck, looking at Sol. Then a tall, strong-built man with shiny silver hair approaches, dressed in a long black coat with dark trousers and shoes of the same color. Next to him where were two children. The girl had regularly short, short, dark purple hair with bangs covering her right eye. She was wearing a black skirt, a simple white shirt rolled up to her forearms, dark sneakers, and black knee-high stockings. The other is a boy with short black hair down to his ears, wearing a white shirt with horizontal black stripes, a gray sweater, dark pants, pants, and slightly lighter shoes with white details. H.E.H.E. was holding in his hands a thick book that he had shyly embraced. Nice to meet you, my name is Renji Yomo, Yomo, and this is my niece Tauka Kirishima. Renji introduced himself serenely and calmly, calmly, while little Tauka stood right next to the other children with her eyes fixed on the hero. It's nice to meet the symbol of peace, Tauka said with a slight smile as she looked at the hero and then turned to see how her friend was shyly hiding behind Renji. Come on, on, Kenki, introduce yourself, the girl said to the black-haired man in a somewhat stern way, making Kenki, Kenki, with some difficulty, difficulty, come out of his hiding place to get next to Tauka. My name is Kenki Ken, it's it's a pleasure, Kenki said, said, a little nervous and with his book covering his mouth and nose as he looked at Izuku. His father couldn't bring him today, Renji said calmly, calmly, seeing Izuku, Izuku, who felt a little sorry for the boy and crouched down in front of him. I see you read Kafka's The Metamorphosis. It's really a great book, Izuku said to Kenki, Kenki, kindly and internally surprised that a child of his age would read a book of that nature, but he did not judge him and admired him for his literary taste. Kenki, Kenki, at the green-haired man's comment, comment, was a little surprised and nodded his head with a small smile on his face. After that, Izuku stood up to keep his sights on both adults and children. Now it's my turn to introduce myself, he said, knowing full well that it wasn't necessary, but he still had to be polite. My name is Izuku Midoriya, Midoriya, and I'm the number one Deku hero. ITIT's really a pleasure for me to meet these little future heroes. He introduced himself and then lowered his gaze to the six children who were moved by his words. Then the green-haired man turned to look at his daughter, daughter, and in that way, way, everyone finally noticed the presence of the beautiful girl, girl, who was holding the hand of the symbol of peace. Here he understood that it was her turn to introduce herself, herself, and she and she smiled broadly. My name is Uri Midoriya, it's a pleasure to meet you all, said Uri happily and in a friendly way, and then lowered her head a little in a polite way. I didn't know the peace symbol had a daughter, Kiritsugu said calmly, seeing the little albino, albino, who somehow resembled his wife because of the color of her hair and eyes. Wow, this must be a premise, Spirit said with a sideways smile and his hands in his pants pockets, pockets, watching the hero. I would appreciate it if you kept it a secret, I don't want the media to start bothering her, Izuku said to the two parents calmly, calmly, and they accepted without any problem, understanding what he meant. Then Irisfeel bent down to place a hand on Iris' head to caress it. 
She's a very pretty girl. If she were my daughter, daughter, I'd call her Eliasville, said the woman with a kind and gentle smile, smile, while the little girl smiled contentedly. Sheer walked over to Izuku to grab her little hands over the green-haired man's robe. You're amazing, I want to be just like you and my father, said Shearer with excitement and enthusiasm, causing his parents to smile in amusement, amusement, as did Izuku. Then it was Sol's turn to grab the robe of the peace symbol. Show me how to be as cool as you, Sol asked the green-haired man, trying not to be too excited and failing in the attempt. After all, all, he wanted to be just like the hero in front of him. Kanki timidly approached Izuku to hand out his book with a little nervousness. Then we talk about Kafka. The boy asked the hero, hoping to talk to him about the book, which he has only been able to do with his father and mother. Oi, leave him alone, Shiro, Artoria said to Shiro earnestly as she tugged at his shirt collar so he wouldn't disturb hero number one. Be still, soul. Soul. Maka exclaimed angrily at it soul and then gave you a karate blow to the head, head, causing the boy to have to rub his sore bump. He's probably too busy for that, Kenki, Tauka said to Kenki strictly, and the boy bowed his head in despondency. The superiority of the girls over the boys caused the adults to be a little amused by the scene, scene, along with Iri looking at those who would be her friends. Why are you all outside? Izuku asked the adults calmly since, since, according to what he understood, understood, the nursery should have been open for five minutes. Apparently the teacher hasn't arrived yet, Renji replied calmly, looking at the green-haired man so that the sliding door of the entrance opened abruptly from the inside. Be sorry for the delay, exclaimed Fayumi, Fayumi, embarrassed and agitated, sweating a little and catching the attention of the parents and children who turned to look at her. It turns out that some things happened on the way here, but now everything is ready, said Fayumi, smiling a little nervously as she scratches the back of her head to see those present. Fayumi-chan, Izuku asked, his eyes wide open and his mouth slightly open at the sight of the girl in front of him. He just couldn't believe it, maybe it was all a figment of his imagination, but that particular snow-white hair with crimson red streaks, those beautiful turquoise eyes, that sublime figure, figure, and that melodious voice, it was clear that he couldn't confuse them, Fayumi was really in front of him. Fayumi clearly recognized that voice and focused on the young man she identified at the moment, which caused her to be bewildered and her world to stop at that very moment. Aizuku kun she said incredulously incredulously and surprised, shifting her attention to those curls, those eyes, those freckles, everything is and will always be captivating for her. Her, who felt her heart rate increase in intensity while her mind struggled to assimilate Izuku's presence in that place, moment, moment, and situation. An hour ago at the Todoroki residence, Rei was in the dining room with Natsu and Shoto, Shoto, having toast and juice for breakfast, breakfast, only to suddenly open the sliding door abruptly. My alarm clock is late, exclaimed Fayumi, Fayumi, still in her pajamas, with noticeable desperation and her hair tousled by her recent awakening. Wow, you look disgusted, disgusted, Fayumi, Natsu said to his older sister with a joking smile when he saw her so disheveled. You don't help Natsu, for some reason my alarm clock was delayed, delayed, and I'm going to be late to Yui, Fayumi said, said, clearly distraught and fixing her hair with her brush as she approached the table. Yesterday, yesterday, when Hawks Kun came, came, I could see that he took your phone when you were making tea. Her mother said with a small smile, smile, remembering the blonde hero using her daughter's phone on the couch in the living room. Fayumi was surprised by what her mother said. Why didn't you stop it, mom? She asked him, him, clearly baffled that he had allowed that to happen. After after all the years of friendship she has had with Hawks, Hawks, they have taught her two valuable lessons. The first is not to give him access to any data or personal object since it could be used for some joke or extortion, and extortion, and the second is not to allow him to speak on her behalf since he had earned several problems because of that. Since you're good friends, I thought it was normal between you, Ray replied calmly, without understanding where she went wrong. After after all, all, Natsu didn't care about sharing her phone with her friends. Fayumi gritted her teeth in fury, fury, directed at the winged hero. I'm going to have daddy roasted until it's golden brown, she murmured, really annoyed that because of him she might be late for her first day at work. Natsu, give me your car key, Fayumi asked his younger brother, who responded by throwing them at him instantly. Please don't smear it with pedestrian's blood, Natsu said to Fayumi, smiling with amusement and jest. Of course not, she exclaimed, somewhat offended, and then quickly went to her room to get dressed. Aren't you going with her, Shoto? Asked Ray to her youngest son, son, who had just finished drinking his orange juice calmly. No, I still have time to get to class early, Shoto replied calmly, looking at his mother and then glancing sideways at the door through which his sister had left. Besides, I don't want to be there when she gets fined for speeding, added the mixed movie, having a hunch that maybe his sister would drive like in a racing movie. After 30 minutes of speeding and a speeding warning, we came across Fayumi walking through the lonely halls of Yui on her way to the principal's office. She was dressed in blue jeans, beige sneakers, a white shirt rolled up and over it, it, a pink sweater, her inseparable glasses, and she carried a notebook in her arms as she walked briskly. Ennezu sensei will forgive my delay if I explain that it was Hawks's fault, Fayumi thought, smiling nervously in the hope that she would not be reprimanded on her first day at work by her prankster and annoying friend. 
In a matter of minutes, minutes, he arrived at the front of the office doors, took a deep breath, breath, and then walked in without hesitation. Be good morning, greeted Fayumi with a smile, entering the place, taking by surprise the teachers who were inside along with Principal Nezu. Oh God, you took me by surprise, surprise, Todoroki, said Mike to his former student with a hand on his heart, feeling how it was agitated by the sudden fright. Fayumi was really confused to see her former masters in that place at that very moment, but for the moment, moment, the happiness of seeing them again overshadowed her curiosity. Wow, wow, girl, you've grown up since the last time I saw you, Midnight said to the albino with a small smile as she noticed that the girl had gotten a little taller and her body had developed a lot more since she was a student. It looks like you've been in a race, Ken remarked, surprised to see how the girl seemed a little anxious and tired to walk through the door like that. We need to talk about being punctual, Todoroki, Aizawa told her former student with a serious look, causing Fayumi to smile a little nervously at having to receive one of her former teacher's strict sermons. Hello, hello, senseis, what are you doing here? Asked Fayumi to her teachers while smiling at them slightly, wanting to know the reason for her presence in that place. I called them, Nezu said calmly, catching the attention of the mixed movie, movie, which which remembered that he had arrived late to the office to which the animal had summoned him. I'm I'm sorry for being late, late, sensei. Fayumi apologized, bowing her head sincerely, for not having started in the best way by giving a good image. Don't worry, worry, Todoroki, you must have your reasons. Anyway, anyway, I have to inform you of something, Nezu said, said, smiling happily and not giving importance to the three-minute delay of the girl who raised her head, head, relieved and calmer to hear what they would say. You are going to have seven seven children in your care, they are all children of influential and important people, the director of Yui reported calmly, and the girl was intrigued. Are they the children of politicians? Asked Fayumi curiously, with a finger on her chin as she watched the little animal in her seat. Something like that, Kan said this time with his arms crossed and a slight sideways smile at the girl, girl, who raised a confused eyebrow. Aizawa cleared his throat to proceed to explain. Artoria Pendragon is Emiya Shiru's adoptive sister, sister, and they are both the sons of Kiritsugu Emiya, an elite professional assassin in the service of the Japanese government who acts to prevent wars and eliminate corrupt politicians, the black-haired man said calmly as Fayumi stiffened and widened her eyes. A professional assassin, asked Fayumi, Fayumi, surprised and nervous at the single mental image that had formed in her mind of the man. ITIT -IT was certainly shocking to know of a professional assassin who, who, at any moment, moment, could kill her if something happened to her children. Nimiri, on the other hand, sat relaxed on the director's desk while crossing her legs. His wife, wife, Irisville von von Einsburn, Einsburn, is the head of an important foreign family with worldwide influence, Midnight revealed, smiling slightly as she saw Fayumi, Fayumi, who seemed to continue to be taken aback by what she heard. Maka Albarn is the daughter of Mr. Spirit Albarn, an elite bodyguard of a friend of mine, Nezu said, smiling calmly, remembering his friend, friend, who is the director of another school of heroes and and was called by the nickname Shinigami. Tauka Kirishima's uncle is Mr. Renji Yomo, who has high influence in the slums to keep the street gangs out of them them, Ken reported serenely, reminding the red-haired man that he undoubtedly made a great contribution along with the police to maintain the almost non-existent crime that Deku had left as a symbol of peace. Sol Evans is the heir of the prestigious Evans family that has been a great collaborator for Yuyui and other hero schools in the world. Aizawa Fayumi told her serenely while the girl was nervously nervously assimilating what was being said. And finally, Kenki Ken is the adopted son of Kishu Arama, an undoubtedly dangerous man who heads police activities in Japan and manages other governments such as Russia and America. Nezu said with his arms crossed as he looked at Todoroki, Todoroki, who was incredulous and surprised instead. Is it okay for me to know all that? Asked Fayumi, Fayumi, trembling slightly and smiling nervously as she hugged her notebook on her chest with some fear of what would happen to her if anything happened to the children of such important influences. Of course, you're going to be in charge of her children after all, Neza replied, replied, completely oblivious and unconcerned about the girl's nerves. After all, all, she had the previous hero number two endeavor as a father to protect her. Fayumi took a few seconds to calm down and breathe. But there they only mentioned six six children, who is the last one? Asked the girl, girl, intriguingly seeing her former teachers, who interspersed glances at each other, other, being Mike, Nimuri, Nimuri, and Nezu, Nezu, who smiled with some malice and then turned to look at Fayumi. It will be more fun if you go and find out for yourself, Nimuri said to her former student innocently and with a hand on her cheek, cheek, causing the two-haired girl to feel a chill run down her spine. Now I have a bad feeling, said Fayumi, somewhat fearful and having the slight impression that something was about to happen with regard to the child about whom they omitted to tell her anything. Ahaha, uh -huh, just relax, relax, Todoroki, said Mike to the girl with a relaxed smile, pointing with both hands to lighten his nerves and mistrust a little. Shouldn't you be, you'll be open in 25 minutes. Ken asked her former student calmly, and Fayumi stiffened, stiffened, remembering that she had to open the nursery and receive the children. 
Oh yes, I forgot to mention that things inside the place are a bit messy, so I would appreciate it if you could give it a brief cleaning. Nezu said to the girl with a small, small, innocent smile, smile, and this caused her anxiety and haste to increase. Yes, excuse me, I'm leaving exclaimed Fayumi hurriedly and nervously, quickly running running out of the office in the direction of the nursery to prepare everything as quickly as possible. Once the Todoroki left the place, Aizawa turned to look in Nezu's direction. Why didn't we tell you about Midoriya? Aizawa asked the little animal calmly, intrigued by the reasons for keeping this information hidden. Nezu shrugged simply, because that way she'll be more surprised. I understand that she hasn't had contact with Midoriya since they graduated. So their meeting will be entertaining, replied the small but evil principal of Yui, Yui, and that way no one had anything else to comment on it. After all, the girl had not been told that the seventh child was none other than Iri Midori, the daughter of the greatest hero in the world and the person with the most influence and importance in society, for her very presence was a symbol of prosperity and peace. Returning to the present, we find ourselves in the moment of that surprising and sudden reunion between Izuku and Fayumi, who looked at each other, clearly disoriented by the present presence of the other in that place. Ayizuku kun Fayumi said with her eyes open and adjusting her glasses to see if she was really seeing well, but it was obvious that yes, even without glasses, glasses, she could recognize the silhouette in front of her without any problem, it's Izuku Midoriya. Do you know each other yet? Kiritsugu asked the green-haired man next to him calmly, but he noticed that the young man was gawking at the teacher until, until, after a few seconds, seconds, he woke up from his thoughts. Ohoh, -oh um. Yes, Izuku said, smiling a little nervously as he watched Kiritsugu. Fayumi-chan was a friend from when I studied here in Yui. She is also Endeavor's daughter, replied the green-haired man as calmly as he could. This this caused Fayumi to feel a little hurt just by being introduced that way, but she did not blame him since she understood that it would also be uncomfortable for him to meet her. Oh wow, it looks like we have a famous girl as our children's teacher, Irisfeel said with a small smile as she saw the mixed movie that she remembered was still in the presence of very important people. Oh yes, let me introduce myself, Fayumi said, smiling a little nervously and then calming down. My name is Fayumi Todoroki, Todoroki, and from today I will be in charge of taking care of your children. Todoroki introduced herself with kindness and politeness. Politeness, while Izuku noticed that she was wearing a green apron with the letters Fayumi Sensei written in red. I guess you already know our names, so we can spare us the introductions, Kiritsugu said with a slight smile, smile, looking at the girl, girl, who nodded quickly with a little nervousness. Say hello to your teacher, children, Irisville said to Shiru and Artoria, and the two infants proceeded to approach the front of the young woman with two-tone hair. Nice to meet you, miss, you can count on me to protect you all from the villains, exclaimed Shiru with joy and excitement as she raised a fist in the air, air, causing Fayumi to nod in amusement. Excuse Shiru, he thinks he's a vigilante hero, Artoria said to his new teacher calmly, causing the redhead to get upset. Hey Saber, I'm going to be a vigilante hero like Deku and Dad. Shiru said Shiru said to the blonde, blonde, clearly motivated and causing Fayumi to smile at both of them gently. It's a pleasure to meet you both, I hope we get along, Fayumi said to both children, children, who nodded and then entered the nursery. This beautiful little girl is my daughter Maka, Maka, and the brat next to her is Soul. Spirit said to Fayumi with a friendly smile that later turned into a grimace of annoyance when she saw the little boy who, who, along with Maka, Maka, stood in front of the girl who would be his new teacher. It will be a pleasure to be in your care, Miss Todoroki, Maka said to Fayumi politely, smiling in a friendly way, and then bowing slightly. You can call me Fayumi-sensei, Fayumi said to the girl kindly, kindly, and she nodded her head. Then the teacher turned to see Sol, who had his hands in his pockets and seemed disinterested. Just don't send me to sing or do silly dances, they're not cool, Sol told the mixed movie in a relaxed way and then received a karate blow to his head. You have to respect Fayumi-sensei, Sol. Maka reprimanded him angrily, then grabbed him by the ear and pulled him inside while Spirit smiled proudly at his daughter. Then it was Tauka's turn to get to Fayumi's front while pulling Kanki's arm, which kept hugging his book shyly. My name is Tauka Kirishima, Kirishima, and this is Kenki. Tauka introduced them with a small smile as she looked at her new teacher, causing Fayumi to focus her attention on the black-haired boy. Kenki's father couldn't come today, today, and he apologizes for that. He's busy, Renji said to Fayumi calmly, calmly, and she felt a little sorry for the boy and bent down until she was at his level. Do you like to read, Kenki-kun? Fayumi asked the boy with a gentle, warm smile, which caused the little boy to hide his face a little more. Fayumi-sensei is asking you something, answer Kenki, Tauka said to Kenki a little sternly, and the boy nodded his head in response to his teacher's question. Inside there are many books that you can read if you want, Fayumi said to the little boy in a kind and welcoming way, so that Kenki smiled a little excitedly and then entered the nursery together with Tauka. We'll come and get you later, behave well with Fayumi-sensei, Irisfeel said to her children affectionately, saying goodbye with a gesture being answered in the same way by Shiru and Artoria. 
If I ever hear a complaint from you, soul, I'm going to tell your mother, exclaimed Spirit to the little white-haired boy who ignored him olympically, receiving a blow to his head from Maka. Tauka, please keep an eye on Kenki, Renji said to his niece calmly, receiving a nod from the little girl who had Kenki next to him, a little embarrassed to have to be watched. It was a pleasure to meet you, Hirodeku, Kiritsugu said to Izuku in a friendly way, and the rest of the adults agreed with him. After all, it was thanks to the presence of the green-haired man that his children were safer and the crime rate had dropped to the point where they could breathe easily. Izuku smiled pleasantly at them. You can call me Midoriya, the pleasure was mine. I hope our children get along, he said with joy, having the feeling that it would be so, which the adults recognized and responded with the same kindness at the time of saying goodbye and then going their ways. After the parents left, the children went inside the nursery, leaving Izuku, Hiri, and Fayumi, who were really unsettled by Izuku's words, may our children get along. He is a child. At that point, the young woman finally focused her attention on the cute and adorable little girl who was holding Izuku's hand. She hadn't noticed her for being so distracted with her thoughts and introductions. Is she Izuku's daughter? You'd better show up, Hiri, Izuku said to her daughter, smiling at her with a little nervousness. Hiri understood and let go of her father's hand, and then stood in front of Fayumi, who had her incredulous gaze on her. Nice to meet you, Fayumi-sensei. My name is Hiri Midoriya, and I'm five years old. Hiri introduced herself, smiling happily, showing her right hand with her five fingers in a tender way, and being a hard reality check to Fayumi, who remained stiff. And Midoriya, asked Fayumi, smiling nervously and sweating a little as she actually heard Izuku's last name on the little girl. Maybe it was her niece or a distant cousin, no, that's not possible, and she knew it. Izuku didn't have any cousins or uncles, she only had her mother and Tashinori, who had gotten married in the middle of their third year in Yui. So, does that mean that Hiri is his daughter? It's not possible. Maybe there would be a completely logical explanation for this. Yep, my daddy is the best hero of all, Hiri replied with happiness and innocence, seeing her teacher, and then went to hug Izuku's leg, who smiled for her little girl while Fayumi went blank. Izuku was genuinely surprised to find Fayumi, but he couldn't let it get to him. I'd like to have a proper conversation, Fayumi-chan, but I have to start teaching soon, he said to the Todoroki calmly, which caused Fayumi to be shocked again. Did he teach classes? Asked Fayumi, stuttering and surprised to hear what the green-haired man said, was he teaching in Yui? Izuku nods his head at Fayumi's question and then kneels in front of Iri to look at her affectionately and gently as he places a hand on her head. You know what we're talking about, be kind to your classmates and listen to Fayumi-sensei, okay. The peace symbol said to his daughter, smiling slightly and receiving a nod from an excited and joyful Iri. Yes, daddy, I'm going to behave very well, replied the little girl, smiling happily, causing Izuku to feel proud of the girl and look at him happily. That's my princess, have a wonderful day, Izuku said to Iri affectionately, and then was suddenly hugged by Iri, who clung to his chest, pressing her cheek against his shirt, to which Izuku smiled paternally to hug her protectively and gently, causing Fayumi to feel pressure in her chest when she saw such a touching and beautiful scene in front of her. Iri then broke away from the embrace and then walked until she was behind Fayumi. Goodbye, daddy, said the little albino to her father with a radiant smile, and then she entered the place with the rest of the children, leaving both adults in an awkward silence. There were so many things to say, most of them would bring back good memories for both of them, but in the end they would end in a bitter taste. They had history, and that was undeniable. Remembering the precious and happy days in those moments did not help them stay calm, so Izuku was the one who took the floor. I, um, it was nice to see you again, Fayumi-chan, Izuku said, smiling slightly, seeing her daughter's teacher in a cordial way, which made Fayumi a little nervous. I say the same, Izuku-kun, Fayumi replied, blushing a little and trying to keep her composure in front of the green-haired man who hasn't left her mind for years. I suppose I'll see you later, said the green-haired man calmly, remembering that there was little left before his class began. Yes, later, yes, I guess, I'll see you, for every since you have to come and get her, said Fayumi, smiling nervously and without formulating her sentence well, which amused Izuku a little, who said goodbye with a wave of his hand and then walked away with his hands in his robe. Fayumi, left alone, goes into the nursery, closes the sliding door, and then rests her back on it while covering her embarrassed face with her hands. Fayumi said to herself, mentally ashamed of the way she talked to Izuku while her face was very flushed and her heart was beating like crazy. She wondered, clearly disoriented, confused, and very intrigued by what was happening. Then a tug on her apron caught her attention. Um, asked Fayumi, removing her hands from her face to see how in front of her was Iri gently tugging at her apron while at her sides were Artoria and Maka watching their teacher. What's the matter, girls? Fayumi asked the three little girls who had woken her from her mental wanderings. What should we do, Fayumi-sensei? Iri asked her teacher curiously, since she didn't know exactly what to start doing in kindergarten. I think we'd better introduce ourselves and say what we like, Fayumi told the girls in a friendly way, clapping their hands together and mentally focusing on separating their personal affairs from work. At the thought, Shiro raised his hand excitedly. I'll start. I'm Shiro Emiya, and I like vigilante heroes like my dad and the Deku hero. I want to be like them when I grow up, the boy said to the rest of those present with a big smile to introduce himself. Then it was Artoria's turn, and she remained calm. 
I'm Artoria Pendragon, and I like stories of knights in honor. Personally, I'd like to be a heroine as dedicated as the hero Deku, said the blonde with a small smile, remembering the magnificent aura that her idol gave off. After that, Sol scratched his head to look at everyone with a sideways smile. I'm a soul eater, and I'm going to be a cool hero like Deku or Hawks, the confident and relaxed little guy introduced himself. Maka just shook her head and stood next to Sol to point a thumb at him. This fool's name is Sol Evans, and my name is Maka Albarn. I want to be a great heroine who protects the innocent as resolutely as the hero Deku and the heroine Rukyu, said the blonde Ash in a friendly way, looking at her companions. Then it was Kanki's turn, who was still shyly hugging his book. My name is Kanki Ken, I like to read, and when I grow up, I want to do good and help others like my dad and the hero Deku do, said the black-haired boy, thinking of his two role models, his father as a policeman and Deku as a hero. You and I are going to get along, we're going to help everybody. Shiro said this to Kanki in a friendly and cheerful way, receiving a somewhat awkward nod from Kanki. Then everyone focused on the serene Tauka, who was next to Kanki. My name is Tauka Kirishima, I personally like rabbits, and I want to be a very strong heroine who can protect my family. My favorite heroes are the rabbit heroine Mirko and the peace symbol Deku, said the girl with a small friendly smile, so that later both she and the rest turned to look at Iri. The little girl smiled broadly and clasped her little hands in front of her. My name is Iri Midoriya, I really like AI-chan, math, and reading, and I like to make new friends. I want to be as good a heroine as I am, daddy, who is the best hero of all. Iri said she was happy and proud to be her father's daughter. At Iri's presentation, the rest of the children were surprised. Are you Deku's daughter? It must be amazing exclaimed Shiro in amazement and with sparkles in his eyes as he and the rest approached Uri. Yep, my daddy is amazing and can do amazing things, he's the best hero in the world, replied Uri angelically and with her little hands held on the pendant of her necklace that had as another half the pendant that her father was wearing at that moment. Fayumi watched with a gentle smile as the six children began to chat with Uri to ask her questions and make different comments, flattering the symbol of peace. He was happy that the little children who would be heroes in the future would admire in this way the green-haired man, who undoubtedly had well deserved his place as the best in the world. She thought it was adorable to see them so excited and talking with laughter, but Fayumi still couldn't be curious about Uri and her relationship with Izuku. I really had a lot of questions, and I wanted answers as soon as possible, but it wasn't the time or the place he had to do his job. How about we play a little game? Fayumi asked the seven children in a friendly way, and they all looked at him curiously. Now we move with Izuku, who was at that time in his class that was already occupied by his students, who were sitting in their seats with their attention on their hairy teacher, who had several works stacked on the desk. All right, I'm glad to see that everyone made their reports, Izuku said with a small, calm smile as he easily placed the last stack of work on the desk. I'll review them during my break, and at the end of the day, I'll give you your grades, he told them calmly as he turned to look at them. At that, Seiko raised her hand from her seat. Excuse me, sensei, but you were asking me something about the report, she said politely to her teacher, and he gave her a chance to speak. Why didn't you let us put an exact amount on the civilians to be rescued? She asked the green-haired man, while others also wondered the same thing. Izuku smiled slightly as he reached into his robe. Good question. As you know, the report was to create for yourself a situation where a villain attacks in the middle of a shopping mall, and you find yourself in the situation of responding to that, he told his students as he began to walk between their seats. They had to plan a strategy using their ingenuity and skills to resolve the situation, taking into consideration the actions of the villains and civilians. He continued speaking eloquently and professionally, and then stopped right next to Uraraka's seat, who blushed a little nervously. The young professor focused his gaze on Seiko. The answer to your question, the reason why I didn't allow you to specify the number of civilians, is because of the heroic motivation in you, Izuku said calmly, causing intrigue in the class. Heroic motivation, asked Mirio, being the first to ask about what his master had said. Let me explain it to you better, Izuku said calmly, closing his eyes to go back to his desk, where he would take the first job he saw and then see the name. This is mine as job, he told his class as he opened the report and searched for a specific part. Are you going to read it? Mind asked, embarrassed that his teacher was going to read to everyone what he had posted. Just a small part, the green-haired man replied kindly, then focused his gaze on the report. When he runs into the villain, he decides to use his spheres to immobilize him and then go out in search of professionals who can defeat the villain, Izuku told his students calmly, summarizing what his red-haired student had placed. Isn't that a coward? Asked Mina with a finger on her chin as she looked at the perverted boy in the class. Oh, shut up, I didn't stand a chance in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Mina said to the haired woman angrily, defending herself since she had her reasons for not fighting. Izuku cleared his throat, catching the attention of his students. The strategy chosen by Mainta is not wrong. If a hero finds himself in a disadvantageous situation, he must use his ingenuity and logic to find a more viable way to turn the tables, he said with a slight smile, then focused his attention on Mainta. But now I ask you, Mainta, if there was a civilian trapped right behind your villain, would you come back to save him? He asked the boy calmly, and he became a little embarrassed. 
Well, I honestly think I couldn't do anything for him and would run even faster to find a hero capable of helping him, Minter replied, somewhat ashamed of himself since he really sounded like a coward even though it was just a report. It's okay for you to be honest, don't worry, Izuku reassured him comfortingly and kindly, and then proceeded to take another job and see the author's name. Now I'll read Bakugou's work, he reported calmly, and several turned their attention to the blonde man, who kept his frown in his seat. He's probably going to have a giant monster or something like that as the villain, Shinso said, smiling slightly mockingly at Katsuki, who looked irritated but remained silent. Here Bakugou placed in the attack a villain with a gigantic quirk who burst into the mall, what do you think he did? Izuku asked the rest of his students calmly. Did you blow him to death? Asked Siro with a mocking smile, causing the blonde to frown more. Shall I insult him to death? Asked Kaminari now, and several laughed in amusement, knowing that all these things were things that the ash blonde would do. Stupid idiots, Bakugou said to everyone with annoyance, looking at them seriously, and then turned his attention to the green-haired man who would talk about his report. Izuku shook his head at his opinions. No, he launched the villain's attack in the opposite direction to the civilians to get their attention and avoid damage to the structure that could block escape routes. He also prioritized evacuating the civilians to then completely confront the villain. He replied calmly and with a small smile, acknowledging the good analytical skills that the boy has. I expected something like that from Bakugou. He's one of the big three for a reason, Kayoyuka said, smiling relaxed and looking sideways at Katsuki who was the second member of the Big Three, the third was Todoroki, and the first was Mirio. Of course, these considerations were based on his performance in general as well as on the results of the sports festivals. But even so, Tamaki, Nejire, Kirishima, and Takoyami were also at a high level. Izuku put the reports down on his desk and walked to his student's side to look at him calmly. That is no relevance here, Jiru, any hero, regardless of their status or capabilities, has the possibility to choose, attack, or defend. He asked openly and with a slight smile to continue. Heroes have the purpose of defending people from evil, we have a duty to protect them, and that is our number one priority, he told all his students in an inspiring but calm way. That's why I asked them not to put civilian numbers in their jobs, because the point is that Bakugou could very well have been attacking his villain uncontrollably without worrying about the damage since there would have only been a single civilian in the mall. But he still didn't take into account the number and acted as he would have done if it had been a large number. Izuku told them while several showed their astonishment since they had not taken that into account with that way of thinking. The young professor noticed that they got his message, and he walked to his desk while scratching the back of his head. What I want to get at is that we should make no distinction in whether to risk saving one person or a thousand. We should protect each person as if their value were that of millions. Each person is worth something, and we must give our best effort to save them, he said to all his students with a confident look full of forceful confidence that increased the admiration of his class for him. It's like what you did against Scarlet Carnage two years ago, said Kirishima excitedly, remembering the event he was able to see live on television. At the redhead's phrase, several recalled the event. It's true, it was certainly amazing to see that battle, said Mirio, smiling happily with his eyes fixed on his master, who had undoubtedly left him impressed in that battle. I didn't expect anyone to remember her, Izuku said, smiling slightly embarrassed and scratching his cheek. Are you kidding? It was super epic, Hiroshima exclaimed, really excited by his master's manhood, so that later both Kaminari and Siro joined in his enthusiasm. My heart almost stopped when I saw him protecting that woman, Jiro, Tsuyu said with his hands clasped on his chest as he recalled the fright he received at that moment. Izuku calmly closed his eyes and leaned against his desk, remembering the encounter. Scarlet Carnage had the quirk to crush with her fists hard enough to pierce through metal, he would say, recalling the event in his mind. I had beaten him, and then I made sure all the civilians were safe, he continued calmly, remembering how he thought it was all over. Then Toru got up from his seat, planting his hands on his table. But the villain got up and went to attack a pregnant woman who was in the rubble exclaimed the invisible girl in annoyance, remembering the villain's creeping action that had no chance against the symbol of peace. Hiroshima nodded her head to also rise from her seat. So what Midoriya Sensei did was to stand in the middle of the attack with his hands outstretched to take the blow and protect the woman, exclaimed the redhead, deeply admiring his master for being his role model just like Crimson Riot. Then Kaminari rose from his seat, raising an arm in the air. After that, he knocked Scarlet Carnage unconscious and then brought the woman to safety despite being wounded in her abdomen added the blonde, and several nodded happily and excitedly as they recalled the event that was repeated on television for the following days as a tremendous act of heroism. It was certainly a very tense moment, Takoyami said with his arms crossed from his seat, and several agreed with him, but they were still certain that their symbol of peace would be victorious, and so it did, smiling dazzlingly. Momo raised her hand slightly at her teacher. Weren't you afraid of dying, sensei? After all, you could have crushed your body, the president asked the hero, since she has had that doubt for years. Several were just as curious as they were, and a few, like Kirishima, Mainta, Siro, and Kaminari, thought it was impossible for the number one hero to feel that. Izuku smiled slightly and stood tall with his eyes fixed on the girl. 
I'm afraid all the time of dying or of not being able to save someone, he replied, causing surprise in all the students, which amused the green-haired man a little, but he continued talking. But the true value of a hero is to carry those fears and make them part of his motivation to act, he added, taking a few steps forward as he lowered his gaze to his right fist. Then he looked up with a look that left the young people frozen. I'm afraid of dying like everyone else can, but I'm more afraid of not being able to save the people who need my help, he said with determination and conviction overflowing from his whole being. My life not only belongs to me but also to the people of the world and my family. For them, I will continue to live no matter how difficult the battle is. He said, specifically remembering his little Erie, who would need him throughout her life, and he swore to always be there to support her, so he would never allow himself to die. The one for all began to surround his body, and green rays surrounded him at the same time as he showed off his iconic smile. I'm going to win and get up despite my injuries, I'm going to smile and tell everyone I'm here. The teacher exclaimed in an inspiring and epic way, while in the eyes of his students he gave off a dazzling light of heroism. The girls blushed slightly at the sight of their teacher in such a way, so determined, so determined, so inspiring, and confident. The boys, for their part, couldn't help but see in him someone to aspire to be, someone who overcomes his fears to achieve his goals, someone who risks everything in a battle with enough determination to always make it out alive. It was clear to everyone that they had before them the symbol of peace, and they had in front of them the quintessential definition of a hero. You're too incredible, exclaimed Ciro, influenced by his master's words. It's too bright. He's more dazzling than Mirio, Tamaki said, covering his eyes, a little uncomfortable with his master's brilliance, while Mirio in the front seat looked with admiration at hero number one. That is really what was expected of the symbol of peace, exclaimed Mirio, getting up from his seat with emotion and with a thumbs up completely in agreement with what his master said. Now, as Lemillion, he would make sure to save a million people always with his head held high, and I decide to save another million. That's why everyone considers him the greatest hero of all, Shaoji said from his seat with a small smile on one of his arms. Being a hero like you is not an easy job, but I'll try, Shinso said, smiling slightly sideways, motivating himself to become as admirable a hero as his teacher is. With that said, I hope everyone is ready for tomorrow, Izuku told his students, disabling the one for all as he turned around to walk to his desk. Why, Sensei, are we going to have an exam? Are you going to tell us what it's about? Nejire asked his teacher with the usual curiosity typical of her as he turned to look over his shoulder. Because tomorrow the whole class is going to fight me in the Gamma Gym, Izuku replied calmly and nonchalantly, causing surprise in those present and making their eyes widen. What? They all exclaimed, surprised at the sudden news they were processing. Izuku folded his arms and closed his eyes. Obviously, I'll only use a single quirk, and I won't even exceed 5%, so I'll be at a disadvantage against all of you, he told them, thinking it was okay with the level of advantage he was giving them. Why should we fight you? asked Yuraka a little nervously, raising her hand. After all, it was a bewildering task to affront the peace symbol, which was in a completely different league from them. Izuku smiled kindly at the brunette. I want to see in detail your capabilities in battle and your level of cooperation. I will tell you from now on so that you can all think about a strategy to use against me, he replied. But even so, the surprise had not diminished. And don't worry about limiting yourselves, you can come with everything. Besides, I'll just dodge and immobilize with tape, added the green-haired man, clarifying that point to try to give his students more confidence. After all, it would only be a small test of cooperation. Bakugu stood up, and everyone saw that he had a defiant smile as many explosions occurred in his palms. Now if the time has come for me to show you what I'm made of, Deku, the ash blonde said to his master menacingly, excited to show that cheap copy of All Might what he was made of. Izuku smiled calmly at the blonde and then saw the rest of his students. Anyway, you have until tomorrow to come up with a plan. For now, let's continue with the class, said the young teacher, regaining control of his class and continuing with what he had prepared to teach them. Classes were over, and Izuku was already walking back to Little Heroes to look for Eri. He had some difficulty getting out of the main building because of some questions from Nejire, Toru, Jiru, Kirishima, Shinso, Ida, and Tamaki regarding other measures they were able to apply in their reports. After that, he had to do a very meticulous ninja job to avoid Nimiri, who, according to Kan and Mike, was going to invite him to a coffee, which he would accept amicably if it weren't for the fact that the whole day and, in general, every day was reserved only for Iri. Izuku noticed as he was arriving at Little Heroes that at the front of it were Iri and Fayumi sitting on the Ngawa and chatting amicably until they both noticed the presence of the green-haired man who was approaching. Iri stepped down from the wooden hallway, picked up her bag to put it on, and then ran in Izuku's direction. Happy I, exclaimed Iri, happy and excited to see her father, and she was then received by a hug from the green-haired man while the evening light illuminated the whole place. Hello princess, how did it go? Izuku asked the little girl with a small smile as he kneeled in front of her, who had separated from the embrace. It was a lot of fun, I have a lot of things to tell you, Iri said to Izuku happily, clenching her two little hands and fists that she raised in the air. She wanted to tell her father about her new friends, about the games they made, about their drawing, which had been the third most beautiful after those made by Artoria in second place and Kenki, who had been the best at drawing. He really wanted to tell his father everything. 
Izuku smiled, amused and cheerful, at his little girl's excitement. I'm glad, you'll tell me on the way, he said, receiving a nod from her, and then he stood up as Fayumi approached them both. Iri is a very good girl, she made friends with everyone and behaved very well. Fayumi said to Izuku with a small nervous smile and with her hands clasped in front of her, unconsciously rubbing her bracelet. I'm glad to hear it, I was a little restless, asking me how it would go, Izuku replied, smiling kindly as Iri stood next to him to hold his hand. Fayumi was clearly still nervous and had questions in her mind, but at that moment she wanted to put all that aside since she hadn't met Izuku in so long and had something to say to him, something that took precedence over everything else. Edo, Izuku-kun, I, Fayumi said nervously, bowing her head in sorrow and slightly blushing, really wanting to tell Izuku what she couldn't tell him five years ago. I didn't expect to meet you again like this, Fayumi-chan, I didn't know you were going to be the kindergarten teacher, Izuku said to her daughter's teacher in a friendly and calm way, not noticing that Fayumi had something to say to her. The Todoroki smiled nervously and scratched her cheek with a finger. Well, it was a personal request from Nezu-sensei, and I really liked the idea, he replied, and then mentally reprimanded himself for not being able to tell the green-haired man what he wanted. I see, Izuku said calmly, assuming it was all a plan by his wicked little principal, which he now considered normal. So you teach a new way? Fayumi asked Izuku, smiling slightly and fixing her glasses, wanting to confirm the fact she had been wondering about since the morning. Izuku nodded his head calmly. I'm the assigned teacher of Class 3A, he replied with a small smile, and Fayumi was slightly surprised, even though she already guessed it. Then it's true that you took a break, Fayumi said, remembering what Hawks had told him, since that kind of news wouldn't be known to the media because it would create a scandal and the villains could make a move. To put it another way, yes, I wanted to spend more time with Uri and my parents, plus it's fun to teach my students, Izuku replied, smiling happily and lowering his gaze towards Uri, who responded in the same way and then raised his gaze towards the sunset. After all, he liked teaching and inspiring his students to be great heroes. Also, interacting with everyone's different personalities was refreshing. Then Fayumi noticed something she had ignored. Wait a minute, are you Shoto's new teacher? The co-ed movie asked Izuku intriguedly since she was almost sure she heard him say that he teaches in Class 3A. Yes, Todoroki is a good student, and he's quiet, although I'd like him to talk a little more, Izuku replied, smiling a little nervously for his student, who was a few words if he talked and answered the questions but didn't go any further than that. That's Shoto, Fayumi said, lowering her head with a drop on the back of her neck, knowing that this is her younger brother. He wasn't always like that, not like I remembered him, Izuku said, remembering the little ten-year-old mixed-sex boy who approached him excitedly when he visited Fayumi's house years ago. Back then, little Shoto didn't have the scar on his eye. Fayumi remembered those moments as well, and she bitterly lowered her head. That was a long time ago, he said, smiling sadly since those moments were happier. They were great friends with Hawks in his first year in Yuyui, and his mother had not been admitted to a hospital. At that time, his family was well within what fit since his older brother Taya was still missing. Yes, it's been a long time, Izuku said now, a little less encouraged as he remembered how those visits never happened again and how his relationship with Fayumi had completely collapsed after that day five years ago. That day at the end of his third year in Yui that would be the last one in which they would converse as they had done before. That day, theirs ended. Either way, Izuku shook his head to let go of those memories and decided to change the tension that had formed. And how is Natsu? Is he still so cheerful and cheerful? He asked the Todoroki with a small smile, hoping that the little 12-year-old boy would continue as he remembered him. Fayumi was more animated as well. He's still the same, he's just taller, and he's going to college studying medicine, he replied, smiling, happy that the green-haired man was interested in his younger brother. His two brothers really admired Izuku when he went to visit them. Wow, I'd like to give you some advice, said Izuku, smiling calmly and thinking about maybe giving the boy some medical advice since, during his career. He has been in very extreme situations that have led him to learn many things about human anatomy and different surgical methods that would be useful to the Todoroki. He wouldn't listen to them and would just be excited to see you, after all, you were always his idol, Fayumi commented, smiling amused, just thinking about her little brother excited to see Izuku like in the old days, causing Izuku just like her to smile amused. There she was again, that natural warmth and happiness that Fayumi hasn't been able to experience for five years. She felt again like something she had lost was beating again, that kind of conversation in which they both smiled and chatted. I miss them so much. Fayumi remembered that Izuku must have told her what she had pending, and at that, she lowered her head while shrugging her shoulders with a certain shyness and nerves surfacing in her. Izuku-kun, I, I want to tell you, Fayumi said, blushing lightly and being embarrassed for not being able to get the words out of her mouth. Say it, you didn't tell him five years ago, and you have to tell him now. She thought, closing her eyes, deeply regretting what had happened that day and also for having left things that way between them. And I, really, she continued to stutter, unable to speak when she was interrupted. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Fayumi-chan, but I have to leave now, I need to do some shopping to make dinner, Izuku told the mixed movie calmly as he finished checking the time on his phone to look up at her. 
Of course, don't worry, replied Fayumi, smiling nervously and scratching her head embarrassedly. Say goodbye, Hiri, Izuku said to her daughter, and she smiled broadly at her teacher. See you tomorrow, Fayumi-sensei. Hiri said to Fayumi happily, and the eldest was about to respond kindly, but she was shocked to see that the little girl had a necklace around her neck with a pendant in the shape of half a green heart very similar to hers. Fayumi quickly turned to see how Izuku had a similar necklace on her neck with a pendant complementing the shape of the other, only this one was pure white. The mixed movie felt a deep pain in her heart when she saw them both with the kind of charms that complement each other, but what did hurt Fayumi was seeing that Izuku didn't carry the charm that is half of the one she had. I guess we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, have a good afternoon, Fayumi-chan, Izuku said politely to her daughter's teacher, smiling slightly. Or should I say Todoroki-san? He asked, somewhat confused by what he should call her now. After all, she knew that, at the time, it was hard to say that they were friends, even though he had a deep appreciation for her. No doubt it pained him to think that they had even lost their friendship after what had happened, but they did, and now he had to live in the present. That question was like a dagger thrust into Fayumi's heart. She felt hurt and rejected when she heard him, exactly him referring to her in such a distant way, as if they were barely acquaintances. I'm fine with Fayumi, see you tomorrow. Fayumi said goodbye, managing to smile kindly at father and daughter so that they both began to walk hand in hand away from her. Fayumi stayed in that place for a few seconds and then went back to the nursery and then went inside, closing the door when entering the empty place. After all, the other parents had come ten minutes ago or so to look for the children. The young woman planted her gaze on her green half-heart charm, which was once complete with half of Izuku's. Unable to bear it any longer, he lowered his head sadly as he brought his wrist to his chest, and his feelings began to flow. Fayumi thought, feeling sad about the way in which they had gotten to the point where Izuku was going to talk to her in such a distant way, as if they had never been friends, as if they had not been a couple. It was all my fault, it's because of me that we didn't talk again for so long, I pushed him away from me, Fayumi said to herself, smiling sadly and having very clear memories of the events that happened that day five years ago. I'm so sorry, Izuku-kun, Fayumi said as she was alone, expelling those words she wanted to say to Izuku minutes ago. I'm really sorry, she repeated, regretting the way she left the green-haired man that day, the way she ran away from him without saying those words. She was really sorry that she hadn't said those words to him at least. Then the vibrating of her phone caught Fayumi's attention, and she took it out of her pocket to see the message she had just received from a certain annoying blonde. Hawks, so, what did you think of your surprise on the first day? Isn't he adorable? Fayumi smiled with amusement as she saw her friend's message, which served to ease her sadness. She was still really upset with him for being late and giving a bad image to the children's parents, but she was still grateful to have a clown like him who amused her. You're going to pay me back, Hawks, Fayumi said, smiling slightly as she looked at the screen of the phone and then locked it and focused her gaze on the arcade room where the children had played until they were tired. Of her. But it's true that Iri is a good girl and very adorable. I wonder how she is related to Izuku-kun, she said to herself with curiosity about the relationship that Iri would have with the green hair. After all, she had a cool mind and thought that it was not possible since the little girl is five years old and at that time Izuku was in her third year in Yui. Then the memory of Izuku and Iri's joint charms came to her mind, and she smiled sadly, seeing hers on her bracelet. It looks like someone else took my place, Fayumi said, still feeling a little hurt, but she understood very well that Izuku didn't have it. After all, they were no longer what they once were. At least they both look happy, she said, trying to cheer herself up and feeling a little happy for Iri and her beautiful and touching relationship with Izuku. Then the Todoroki focused on the mess that the whole nursery had become, drawings on the floor, crayons out of their boxes, toys in the corners. Clearly, that was because of Shiru and Sol as the girls and Kenki sorted and cleaned everything they used, the boy in particular only focused on reading the books that were on the shelves. Fayumi patted her cheeks lightly to push the sad thoughts out of her mind and smile more cheerfully. Anyway, I have to clean things up for tomorrow, she said to herself, more focused on being the best teacher for those seven children at the moment. She really wanted to enjoy that work and give them good teaching so that they would grow as good people. I wanted to show Uri and the other kids what kind of teacher she can be. Chapter 6, Uri's Mom and Bento I feel a little discomfort at a few slight pushes on my arm, so with a little difficulty. I open my eyes slightly even when I am sleepy to notice that it is daytime and my daddy is next to me looking at me with an affectionate smile, which makes me smile at him happily and then yawn. Yawa, good morning, daddy. I greet him with a little sleepiness while I get up a little from daddy's comfortable bed. It really is very easy to fall asleep when I can be cuddling him as always. Good morning, princess, daddy replies, smiling at me and stroking my head. I really like that you call me princess. Are you ready for your second day in Little Heroes? He asked, and I nodded my head happily. Yes, daddy, I want to go now. I said excitedly, clenching my fists in front of me, and watched as he smiled amusedly and then tousled my hair a little, causing me to laugh. Very good, Iri, but let's start the morning first, shall we? He said, and I agreed with him so that later daddy would carry me in his arms to take us to the bathroom of the room. When I entered, he left me on the floor and took our toothbrushes. Pappy leaned over to give me mine, and I took it so that Pappy could put the toothpaste on top of it. 
Then I climb the little children's stairs to try to see over the wash and be able to look in the mirror just like Pappy, but I'm still very short. Daddy looks at me lovingly and then lifts me up with one of his arms so that I could see ourselves in the mirror. Daddy is very strong. I could see the two of us with our toothbrushes and our appearances in the morning. Pappy has his hair a little more tousled than usual, but he looks good, and I like to touch his soft hair. It tickles me. I, on the other hand, have my hair tousled, and I still look a little sleepy in my slightly wrinkled pappy pajamas. Yoa, I yawn again, covering my mouth with my other hand. I'm not as good as Daddy to start the morning. Daddy and I brush our teeth, and then he soaks his face with water, so I ask him to do the same with me, and he looks at me amused and then wets his hands a little and then places them on my cheeks. Delicately, he starts wetting my face a little to wake me up, and then he squeezes my cheeks a little. But, uh, I say, feeling how Daddy stretches my cheeks a little. It feels good. Then Pappy and I came out of the bathroom, and we both headed down the hallway, down the stairs, and into the kitchen, where I sat on the couch, watching impatiently as Pappy prepared some omelets for breakfast. Pappy is the best at cooking. He leaves the food on the table, and I sit down next to him to start breakfast. Hurry, Daddy calls me, and I turn to look at him curiously with my cheeks full of food. Would you like me to make you a bento for your lunch? He asked, and I began to think about what a bento was. If I remember correctly, yesterday I heard it in the nursery when Maka mentioned that when her mom came back from her trip, she would prepare delicious lunches for her. Tauka and Artoria said similar things, and it was Fayumi sensei who told us that those were called bentos. I want to eat a Pappy's bento, Pappy's food is the best. If I want daddy, I'm going to share it with the others. I said happily, also wanting to give Fayumi sensei, and he looked at me happy. I like that Pappy looks at me that way. It makes me think that he loves me as much as I love him, but I love him to infinity. Then I'm going to have to make extra meatballs for you to share, he said with a slight smile, and then got up from his seat with his empty plate in the direction of the kitchen. If you want, watch some TV while I do my routine, he said from the kitchen as he cleaned his plate, and I shook my head a little. I can't, Daddy, I have to finish eating and then go get dressed, I said, smiling at him because I wanted him to see how responsible I was, but Daddy looked at me amused. Calm down, Yuri, we still have time, plus I have to help you get dressed, he said, and I pouted a little, ducking my head. I like my dad to dress me, but I want him to feel proud of me. Okay, I accepted and finished my meal, then went to the couch in front of the TV to get on it and then sat down to turn on the TV and put on the AI Chan program that my dad had recorded for me. I watch out of the corner of my eye as daddy leaves the kitchen in the direction of his gym. I still don't understand why my daddy exercises so much every day if he is the most powerful in the world. No one can beat my daddy, daddy is the best. I lose track of time watching AI Chan, and before I know it, I feel Pappy's hands on my little head. It's time to get dressed, Yuri, he told me, already putting on his work clothes, to which I smiled with emotion to let myself be carried by Pappy in the direction of my room on the second floor. It doesn't take more than 10 minutes for him to put on the same clothes from yesterday that were already clean. And then he sits on the edge of my bed for me to sit on his lap, starting one of my favorite moments since I can remember, when daddy brushes my hair. I close my eyes and smile, enjoying the treatment my dad gives me. He is always careful not to hurt me, and he does it in such a delicate way that I think I could go back to sleep. Even if I can't see his face, I can imagine him looking at me with a smile as always, which makes me even happier. Ready, princess, you're ready, she said, and I opened my eyes and then got off her lap and went to the mirror in my room to see myself getting ready to go to the nursery. I turn around to see myself in more detail, and then turn to Pappy to smile gratefully. Thank you, daddy, I said, and he stood up to put a hand on my head. Anything for you, Harry, she said, and I'm really happy. Every day with daddy is the best. Now give me a few minutes to prepare your bento, and then we'll go, he said calmly, and I had no problem with that. We went down again, and I sat on the couch to finish watching AI Chan's show while my dad did my bento. I start to smell the rich smell coming from the kitchen, and I get a little impatient as I wish it was lunch so I could eat daddy's food, but I have to wait to share it with everyone. AI Chan's show ended, and I see how Pappy comes out of the kitchen with two handkerchiefs, one black and the other white, both seem to be covering a kind of rectangular container that I assume will have the lunch that daddy prepared inside. This is your bento, Hiri, he said as he showed me the white scarf, and I was excited because it would be the first time I would try one. I don't know if it will taste different from the food that Pappy normally makes for me, but it will surely be delicious. Keep it in your backpack until Fayumi gives you permission to eat, he said as he handed it to me, and I nodded and then placed it inside my backpack. Let's leave before we're late, Daddy. I said excitedly and anxiously to get to the nursery as soon as possible. Yesterday, Sol proposed a game that was basically that the first one to arrive today would be the winner. Daddy looks at me amused and then offers me his hand, and I take it so we can both head out of our little house. I started asking Pappy some questions about his work as a teacher. What was he like? Was it fun? Did he make friends? And did he play with his students? He seemed to be entertained by my curiosity, and I was happy that he was happy. At the end of his brief answers, he told me that today he would have a special test with his students, to which I realized something. 
I don't know Pappy's students. After a while, we arrived at Yui according to what Pappy told me his name was, and he took me by the hand of the nursery, where I could see in the distance how Fayumi Sensei was waiting at the entrance. Surely I am the first to arrive, and now Sol is going to have to admit that I am the winner. I can notice how my daddy seemed somewhat restless for some reason as we approached Fayumi Sensei, who, when she saw us, had an expression almost the same as daddy's, only she was more obvious and had her cheeks a little red. I hope she is not sick. Good morning, Fayumi. My daddy greets her kindly and calmly, and Fayumi Sensei's cheeks turn a little redder. Then I'll ask her if she's sick. Good morning, Fayumi Sensei. I greet my teacher with a big smile, and she sees me and smiles kindly. Good morning, Hiri. She returned the greeting with a smile and then leaned towards me. You're the first to arrive. You should put her things inside, Hiri, Fayumi Sensei said, and I nodded my head and turned to look at Pappy. See you later, Daddy. I said goodbye with a big smile and then headed towards the nursery. Wait, Hiri, Daddy said, and I stopped to turn to look at him. Aren't you forgetting something? He asked, smiling at me with amusement as he touched his cheek with a finger, causing me to remember that very important thing. He squats down and extends his arms to me, and I run to him with joy to give him a big hug and then give Daddy a kiss on the cheek. He responds with a warm kiss on the forehead and smiles lovingly at me. Have a great day today, princess, she said, gently stroking my hair, and I smiled happily and cheerfully at her. I'll do it, Daddy. You'll have a great day too. I replied and then ran in the direction of the nursery where I got into and then hung my backpack in its place. I looked around just to verify that I'm really the first to arrive. I guess I'll wait along with Fayumi Sensei for the others to come. I can see that Fayumi Sensei is still not coming, and therefore I approach the entrance to look curiously and see how Fayumi Sensei is talking to Pappy. It seems that she has some difficulty talking to him but still can't stop smiling. It's weird. My daddy only speaks to her calmly and kindly and then says goodbye and leaves, leaving Fayumi Sensei there, who says goodbye with a wave of her hand until she realizes that she is alone. Then she lowers her head, sighing, and then comes in my direction until she manages to see me and gets a little nervous when she deduces that I was seeing them. Were you watching us, Iri? Asked Fayumi Sensei, smiling nervously and with her hands resting on her knees. I nodded my head in response. Why do you behave strangely with my dad? I asked curiously as he tilted my head slightly to the side. I don't know what you're talking about, Uri, he replied, feigning ignorance, and I looked at him confused. Why did I deny it? If you want, you can draw a little bit on what the other children are doing. Fayumi Sensei told me kindly and gently, and I agreed with her. I don't know why Fayumi Sensei seems uncomfortable with my dad, if he's the best in the world, but I guess it's just my imagination. After ten minutes, Shiru, Artoria, Maka, Sol, Tauka, and Kenki arrived at the nursery, and Fayumi Sensei told us to draw whatever we wanted most in the world. That's very easy. The second I already knew what I was going to draw, I took my green color and the black color to start drawing my dad in his hero costume. Then, when the time was up, Fayumi Sensei had us present our drawings to the rest of us. Maka drew her mom and her dad in a secluded corner, Tauka drew her parents and uncle, Sol drew her parents and older brother, Shiru drew her parents and Artoria, which for some reason caused Sol to make fun of him a bit, but Shiru didn't care. Artoria drew his parents and Shiru in the same way Kanki drew his mom and dad reading. They all seemed proud of their drawings. I was happy that they love their family so much, they have a dad and a mom, and some of them have siblings. Now it's your turn, Iri, Fayumi Sensei said kindly, and everyone focused their attention on me. I nodded my head and got up from my place to show my great drawing of daddy to everyone. What I love most in this world is daddy, I said, smiling happily, as I showed the drawing where I showed Pappy on a mountain while he illuminated everything as if it were a sun. Then I will ask Fayumi Sensei to hang my drawing on a wall to see it often. MMM, Midoriya Chan, Maka calls to me from the side of me, and I turn to look at her curiously. Why didn't you draw your mom? She asked, intrigued, and I tilted my head slightly to the side. Mom, I asked, a little confused because I honestly don't understand what you mean. Did you want me to draw a mom? Shiro nodded. Exactly. In every family there is a father and a mother and the children. You should also have drawn your mother, Shiro told me, and I looked at him even though I didn't fully understand him. But it's just me and daddy, I replied, and after that, my friends were silently watching me. I don't know the reason for that. I honestly thought that even Sol would have something to say, but he seemed uncomfortable like the rest for some reason that I don't understand. Well, kids, you can play a little while I hang your drawings on the walls, Fayumi Sensei told us, smiling nervously and capturing our attention, making the others nod happily while I kept thinking about what they said, should I have a mom. Kanki went to read just like yesterday. While nearby Taka was talking to Artoria and Maka, playing with some dolls, Sol and Shear took some toy cars to start racing around the place, adding strange powers to them to gain an advantage over the others. I was thinking about joining Kenki or my friends but I kept thinking about the topic from before, so I approached Fayumi Sensei who was taping our drawings to the wall. She notices me and smiles kindly at me. What do you need, Hurry? He asked, and I looked at him curiously as I clasped my little hands behind my back. What's the point of a mother? I asked Fayumi Sensei, and I noticed how she was paralyzed with that smile on her face. What? He asked as if I hadn't heard correctly, so I'll tell him again. 
What is the use of a mother? What use is she? I ask, trying to make her understand my doubt. She looks a little nervous, and her cheeks turn a little red as she plays with her fingers. Fayumi sensei is rare. Well, what's that question about? My teacher asked me, and I pointed to the drawing of my dad stuck on the wall. Everyone drew their moms, and I only have my dad, but I don't understand why I should have a mom, I answer calmly, hoping that she could clarify my doubt. Well, it's not really that complicated. A mother is that woman who raises you, teaches you, and supports you unconditionally, Fayumi sensei replied, and I can understand what she says, but... My daddy already does all those things, so what's the use of a mom? I asked her again, and apparently she was a little thoughtful as she tried to find an answer. You see, Hiri, a dad and a mom support each other to give their children the love and attention they need. So the job of being parents is easier when the two of you are together, Fayumi sensei explained to me, and I nodded, understanding what she was saying. In short, a mom would be daddy's helper. I want daddy not to have to try too hard, how do I get a mom? I ask my teacher, and she freezes again while her face turns redder than before. I guess it has something to do with her quirk. P.P. Well, that's something a little more complicated, Yuri, she told me, playing with her fingers and smiling nervously, provoking more intrigue in me. Why? I asked her, and she seemed hesitant to answer me or not. I honestly don't understand why there is so much secrecy, I just want a mom to help daddy as her assistant or secretary. You see, your daddy must love a woman, and when she marries him, she will become your mom legally. Then she will start tucking you in at night, she will read you bedtime stories, she will hear about your day, she will give you good advice. You will all go out together as a family, and she, along with Izuku-kun, will raise you and support you all your life so that you can achieve your dream. Fayumi sensei replied, losing herself in her words and with a dreamy air as she looked at me affectionately. I don't quite understand what she meant. My daddy already does all those things, I just want a mom to help him a little, but without marrying him, I told her calmly, and she looked confused. Why don't you want them to get married? Fayumi sensei asked me, and I smiled broadly. Because I told daddy that I would marry him when he grew up, I love my daddy, I replied happily, and Fayumi sensei smiled at me, amused, and then patted my head. You're very pretty, Hiri, your dad is very lucky, my teacher with red and white hair told me with a beautiful smile on her face, causing me to stare at him. Fayumi, sensei, I call her, and she looks at me kindly. Tell me, Hiri, he said, and I took one of his hands with my two little hands. Do you want to be my mom? I asked Fayumi sensei, and she froze instead, looking at me as if she had petrified, then her whole face turned white. HHH, Fayumi sensei said in a very loud voice, looking surprised to the point where she took several steps away from me. What's the matter? Asked Sol, coming up to us with his hands in his pockets. What happened to you, Fayumi sensei? Kauka asked our teacher, while the rest also approached us curiously. Well, you'll see, Edo. I, said Fayumi sensei without being able to speak well, apparently. I wonder why he reacted that way. I turned to my friends to answer them. I asked Fayumi sensei if she wanted to be my mom, I told them, and several of them were curious. Artoria took a few steps to get closer to me. Midoriya chan, your dad must love Fayumi sensei for her to be your mom, my blonde friend told me with a small smile. I finally began to understand the whole thing, and I bumped my fist over the palm of my little hand. He turned me around to look at Fayumi sensei, who was still red and saying things with a stutter. Do you love daddy, Fayumi sensei? I asked curiously, tilting my head to one side and observing how she opens her eyes wide and steam begins to come out of her head. Fayumi sensei is very rare. Yes, you know, we should go out to the park in the back for a while so they can have fun outside, Fayumi sensei told us, and we all agreed excitedly. After that, we followed her in the direction of the back of the nursery, where there was a very nice playground. What was I asking, Fayumi sensei? I don't think it's very important. We spent hours playing outside until Fayumi sensei told us it was time to go in for lunch, to which we went back to the place of our backpacks and each of us took out different benthos. Tauka and Kenki shared a bento with two different floors. Shiru and Artoria ate together the bentos that their mother prepared for them, Maka didn't seem to have any, but Sol gave her the luxurious bento of his. If I remember correctly, her family had a lot of money. I excitedly took out the bento that Pappy made for me and sat down in my place to take off the handkerchief and see a cute little pink three-stage container with a bunny on top. Above there is a note that my dad wrote, and I took it to try to read it. It said, to my princess with much love. I smiled a lot, wanting to give daddy a big hug, and then opened the container to let the rich smell of the food come out and disperse throughout the room. In one stage, it was rice with star-shaped hamburger meat and some ketchup on top, making a heart, in another stage. There were nine square meatballs with wooden chopsticks stuck in them, and finally, in the third stage, there were pieces of apple cut cleanly. I grabbed my bento to get up from my seat and look at my friends. Hey, do you want some of my bento? I asked them who focused their attention on me. Isn't that a problem? That's your food, Midoriya chan, Tauka said, looking at me, and I shook my head with a big smile. No problem because my dad made a lot of meatballs to share. I replied, and after that, Shiru and Sol got excited and approached, wanting to eat daddy's food, to which they each took a meatball to eat. Delicious. They both exclaimed, surprised and enjoying Pappy's food. I laughed proudly, and then I offered it to the others, who accepted and took one each, getting the same result. 
They were enjoying what my daddy did, and I'm very happy. After that, we all started sharing our bentos with each other, surprising us by how good each other's meals tasted, even though my papa is definitely the best. I watch out of the corner of my eye as Fayumi sensei watches us, smiling kindly and a little amused. She must feel a little lonely being so far away from us, that's why I walk up to her and then extend my bento to her, and Fayumi sensei looks confused. I want you to drink some Fayumi sensei, my daddy cooks very well, I said, smiling at her, and she looked at me affectionately as she bent down on my height to caress my head. You're very nice, Iri, if you don't mind, then I'll have a dumpling, Fayumi sensei told me, and I nodded in agreement. Then she took the penultimate meatball there was and ate it, to which she widened her eyes in surprise. I saw her expectantly waiting to see her joy at how delicious Pappy's food is, but I could see how tears began to flow from her smiling face. Have Fayumi sensei, I asked, worried, seeing my teacher, who didn't seem to hear me. Why is Fayumi sensei crying? Did I do something wrong? Pappy's food is the best in the world, so I must be to blame. I made Fayumi sensei cry. I'm sorry for doing something bad to you, I said, lowering my head to see my feet while my eyes started to get wet. I felt like crying, but I tried not to, and I didn't want to do anything bad to Fayumi sensei. You don't have to apologize, Iri. You didn't do anything wrong, just that your dad cooks very well. Fayumi sensei told me she was sounding a little rushed and wiping her eyes, but I think she just wants to cheer me up. Sniff, he really. I asked, raising my face to see him, and she nodded with a kind and happy smile. I feel better knowing that Fayumi sensei is okay. It just took me by surprise. You have nothing to worry about, Iri. Thank you for sharing with me, my teacher told me, and I wiped my eyes with a hand and then smiled at her. You're welcome, Fayumi sensei. I say this to my teacher, who looks at me warmly and gently and then pats my head a little. Fayumi sensei is weird. She gets very nervous easily. Her face turns red several times. She can't speak very well, and she started crying suddenly. Fayumi sensei is weird, but she's very good to me. I lower my head a little to see my bento. I finished all the rice with the hamburger meat, and I only have a meatball and the apple pieces left. I inflate my cheeks, a little annoyed since there was almost no food left to share with Pappy. I want to share my bento with him. I want to share my meal with Pappy, so I have to go with him. Fayumi sensei, I said, calling to my teacher as I looked up to see him. Can I go see daddy? I asked curiously, and she was a little surprised and then shook her head. He'll be busy teaching her, you'd better wait until he comes to pick you up. Fayumi sensei told me kindly, but I don't want to wait since lunchtime is over, it must be now. I hear a small scream behind me, and we turn to see how Sol apparently accidentally threw away what little was left of his bento while he was being scolded by Maka. Fayumi sensei didn't take long to go clean up and calm them down, leaving me here. I just want to share a little bit with daddy, it's just going to take a little bit of time, but I still remember the way we took to go to the main building. I calmly go to my seat to take my bento's handkerchief to cover my container, and then I go out the door and leave the nursery. I'll come inside in a little while. I'm just going to look for my daddy, if I remember correctly, he teaches in class 3A. Today I did manage to arrive early after setting my alarm well. I woke up without problems, I dressed as usual, and I came with plenty of time to review the activities I would do with the children today. Yesterday I was definitely a little more nervous as it was my first day here, but I think today I'll be better. I just have to stay calm and try not to be easily surprised. It's simple, right? I just want to show Ari and the other kids that I'm a good teacher. I put on my apron and stand outside the nursery, waiting for the parents to arrive with their children. I still don't know how to talk to Izuku-kun, and my heart still hurts even though I am to blame for this, but I won't achieve anything by discouraging myself. At the moment, our relationship is one of work colleagues. I can't say that he still considers me a friend, even if he wants. I hope I can get used to that fact and still maintain professionalism. I can't let my personal interests interrupt my work. I see in the distance how two silhouettes are approaching, and I stiffen when I see that it is the freckled green hair that I am thinking of, accompanied by the cute and adorable Iri. Apparently they are father and daughter, but I think I'm sure they are not related by blood unless Izuku-kun has done something during our time in the third year. That thought hurts me, so I put it in the dust. Without realizing it, I start walking towards them with a somewhat trembling smile on my face and my cheeks flushed. Why, after so many years, does he still have this effect on me? Why can't I stay calm if it's him? Why can't I take my eyes off his face when we meet and are in front? Good morning, Fayumi. Izuku-kun greets me with a slight smile and his calm and friendly expression, inevitably causing my cheeks to color a little and I feel some nervous. I seem to easily forget that just yesterday he asked me if he would start calling me by my last name. Thank God I told him to keep calling me by my name. At the moment, it's the only thing I have left of those happy days. Good morning, Fayumi sensei says the small and adorable Iri with a big smile. I looked at her kindly, she is a beautiful girl and very good. Good morning, Iri, I say calmly as I lean over to her. You're the first to arrive, you should put your things inside, Iri, I recommend it. And she nodded and then turned to look at Izuku-kun. See you later, daddy, she says, saying goodbye to him happily, and then walks in the direction of the nursery. Izuku-kun calls out to him, and she stops to turn to look at him. Aren't you forgetting something? 
He asked amusedly as he touched her cheek easily, and I can recognize that he wants her goodbye kiss. I still remember with some nostalgia those times when we both said the same thing to each other at school. Then Izuku-kun squats down, extending his arms towards Uri, who went to hug him tightly and give him a big kiss on the cheek, and then he gave her a kiss on the forehead with fatherly love etched on her face. It's really a very touching scene for me. Have a great day today, princess, Izuku-kun says to Uri affectionately as he strokes her hair, and she smiles happily. I'll do it, daddy, you have a great day too. Iri replied excitedly and then ran inside the nursery, leaving Izuku-kun and me alone, making me a little nervous while he stood up. He's still taller than me, even though we were the same height in freshman year. Time flew by, and now he's quite a man. I'm going to take care of Iri very well, so you don't have to worry, Izuku-kun, I said without really knowing what else I could say to her. My mind was blank, and those words came out of my mouth automatically, although it's not that they were false, if I plan to take care of Iri as well as possible. I'll ask you, Fayumi. I know you're very reliable, and even more so when it comes to children, he said, smiling at me slightly. Even if he didn't say it with the intention of flattering me, I still feel happy and play with my fingers while I lower my nervous gaze. Thank you. It's the only thing I can tell him since my mind doesn't process what else I could say to him without having to bring up topics like our past, the state of our current relationship, his personal life, and his connection with Erie. There are many things I want to talk to him about, but I don't think it's the time or the place for that. I'm not as close as I used to be to talking about those things with him. Well, then I'll see you, Fayumi. I have to go because in the afternoon I'll have a little battle against my class, she said calmly, and I smiled a little, amused by what she said. You keep doing things your own way, like when you tried out the freshman class and beat them on your own, I said, and he smiled with amusement and scratched his cheek with a finger. I don't know what to tell you, it's the best way to test them, he said, and I'm glad to see that he hasn't changed in that regard. Anyway, I'll come for Iri later, see you, Izuku-kun said politely, saying goodbye and making a motion with his hand to start leaving. I shake my hand a little to say goodbye until he disappears from my sight, and when I am alone, I sigh and bow my head. I'm really glad to have these little conversations after all the years that we haven't spoken to each other, it's refreshing, and it's something that I see as necessary. I wish we could talk more often, but I guess only time will tell. For now, I'll just be content to be able to talk to Izuku-kun when he brings Iri and when he comes to pick her up. He turned me around to start walking in the direction of the nursery until he noticed Iri's adorable little face peeking out of the doorway, which makes me think that she was watching me talk to Izuku-kun. I get a little nervous and blush slightly as I approach her. Were you watching us, Iri? I asked, resting my hands on my knees, to look at him, and she nodded her head and looked at me curiously. Why do you behave strangely with my dad? She asks me with innocence and tenderness, and I try to keep my nerves hidden when I notice that a little girl of five years old noticed my behavior. She is also Izuku-kun's daughter. I don't know what you're talking about, Yuri, I said, feigning ignorance and hoping that she doesn't get the wrong idea that I'm still in love with Izuku-kun. Kamai, it's not time to think about that. If you want, you can draw a little bit on what the other children are doing, I said kindly, wanting to abandon the subject, and she agreed with me. I just have to wait for the other children to come to start the day. I hope that just like yesterday there will be no inconvenience today. The other children arrived and the first thing I told them was to draw whatever they wanted most in the world, to which the excited children accepted and got on with it for the next 15 minutes. It's reassuring to be able to see them so focused and with how adorable they are I can quickly get used to this. When everyone finished I told them to present their drawings to the others and the first to show was Maka who showed a drawing of her mother in the center while her father was in a corner. She didn't have many details of her family affair but I have a feeling that she has preference over her mother, still, he must want his father to place him in the drawing. Next up was Tauka who drew her parents and her uncle, as I understand her uncle also acts as a father figure to her and has the same amount of appreciation for her. I'm still a little intimidated by Mr. Renji's presence, but he didn't seem to be a bad person. Next to present was Sol who showed a drawing of his parents and older brother. The drawing itself looked more like a kind of graffiti because of the colors it used and it didn't match much with the image I have of them. After all according to the director the Evans family is world renowned and have enough income to build a castle. Next up was Shiro who proudly showed a drawing of her father and mother and next to the two of them was a blonde girl who I presume is Artoria. I suppose he must love her very much for being his sister, even if she was adopted I think they have been together for as long as they can remember. Sol teased him a bit for loving Artoria and I reprimanded him a bit and he stayed calm. Then it was Artoria's turn to show her drawing in which she also drew her parents and placed Shiro in the drawing with a bit of embarrassment. I'm glad that both brothers love each other. It reminds me of the drawings that Natsu and Shoto used to bring when they were very young and they told me I'd love you one chan or your great one chan. Those were good times, I wish they would call me that again. Next up was Kenki who stood up that adorable shyness to show a drawing of his parents sitting on couches and reading books, in short he draws very well for only being five years old. Kishu Arama, I can't get any idea how scary it must be for Kan, Aizawa, and Nezu to tell me that he is a dangerous man in addition to the strong influence he is globally. 
What surprised me yesterday at the end of the nursery was that I met Midnight Sensei, and she told me that Kenki's mother is Ito Yashimura, a great writer of one of my favorite books. For that reason, it must be that Kenki likes reading so much. Then I focus on Yuri, who was the last one left to show her drawing. Now it's your turn, Yuri, I say to the little white-haired girl who smiles proudly and gets up from her seat to show us all the drawings she made. What I love most in this world is Pappy, exclaimed the adorable girl with joy and showing her drawing where Izuku-kun was on top of a mountain illuminating everything like a sun, I certainly had fun seeing the drawing as it somehow captured an aspect of reality. Izuku-kun is a sun. His light and warmth constantly spread and illuminated every corner with his presence. Wherever he went he won people's sympathy. An opponent became a friend, a villain was arrested in one of his heroic actions, and people called out his name or simply admired him in silence. Izuku-kun managed to deal with the problems of others and help them overcome them on their own. He was a pillar and today he is a symbol for people. Izuku-kun is a radiant and beautiful son that with its hopeful smile made you cope with how bad things would be. MMM. Midoriya chan Maka says, looking at Iri who turned to look at him. Why didn't you draw your mother? She asked the albino and I stiffened in my place. It's true, I don't know if Yuri would have a mother or not. That would be a great clue to know if she is Izuku-kun's adopted or biological daughter. For example, if she were to say her appearance, she might assume that her white hair came from her mother, since Yuri herself only resembles Izuku-kun in personality and in the cute expressions she makes. It's not that I'm very interested in knowing if Izuku-kun is engaged or if he's single, I just have to know as Yuri's teacher, that's right. Mom, asked Iri, confused, as if she hadn't understood Maka. Shiru nods. Exactly. In every family there is a father and a mother and the children. You should also have drawn your mother, the red-haired boy said to Iri calmly, but she still seemed to not understand judging by the innocence on her face. But it's just me and Pappy, Iri replied and I and the rest of us fell awkwardly silent as we realized a reality that Iri didn't seem to care about. I was certainly glad that Izuku didn't have something like a wife and I still don't know if he has a girlfriend, but that's not the main point right now. Harry could need a mother figure and if the conversation continues she could get uncomfortable or even cry. Honestly it would be easier if my quirk was mind reading to know if she feels the need for a mom. Although at first glance she doesn't look like it because it seems that all her affection is focused on Izuku-kun. Be well children, you can play a little while I hang your drawings on the walls. I say to everyone with a slightly nervous smile so that in this way the subject that could well end badly for Iri would be abandoned. After all being the only one of the group who does not have a mother should be complicated for her five-year-old mind, I must proceed in this calmly and subtly. The kids start having fun while I with duct tape start sticking the drawings on one of the walls. I guess by mere coincidence I decided to place the drawing of Izuku-kun in the middle of the others and glued it so that it wouldn't fall off, just to make sure that Iri can see her drawing easily, not because I wanted Izuku-kun's drawing to stand out from the crowd. I notice Iri's presence next to me and I focus on the little girl to smile kindly at her. What do you need, Iri? I asked calmly to see what Izuku-kun's daughter would need from me. What's a mom for? Asked Iri, clasping her little hands behind her back and leaving me frozen listening to her words. What? I asked, still perplexed and thinking that I misheard what he said. Surely it is a matter of my imagination. What is a mother for? What use is she? She asked me again and my cheeks flushed and I began to play with my fingers with a little nervousness. Well, what's that question about? I asked her since I really couldn't know her motives. Presumably she knows what a mother is so it doesn't make sense for her to ask me. She pointed to the drawing she made on the wall. Everyone drew their moms and I only have my daddy, but I don't understand why I should have a mom, the little girl told me and I try to figure out what to answer while she watches me with those pretty eyes waiting for an answer. Well, it's not really that complicated. A mother is that woman who raises you, teaches you and supports you unconditionally, I said, summarizing as much as possible so that she can understand it easily. My daddy already does all those things, so what's the use of a mom? She asked me and I was thoughtful for a few moments since these kinds of questions are relative and depend on people's point of view, the best I can do is answer her in a more general way. You see, Yuri, a dad and a mom support each other to give their children the love and attention they need. So the job of being parents is easier when the two of you are together, I explained calmly and she nodded her head, I guess she understood what I said. I want daddy not to have to work too hard, how do I get a mom? Asked Yuri innocently I froze again while the blush on my face increased in intensity, what kind of question is that? PP well, that's something a little more complicated Iri, I said playing with my fingers and hoping that she would drop the subject and go play with the other children, great, I'm being cornered by a cute five-year-old girl. Why? She asked, looking at me curiously and adorably intrigued, focusing her gaze on me. I did my best to tell her that she was just a curious, innocent child. You see, your daddy must love a woman and when she marries him she will become your mother legally. Then she will start tucking you in at night, she will read you bedtime stories, she will hear about your day. She will give you good advice, you will all go out together as a family and she along with Izuku-kun will raise you and support you all your life so that you can achieve your dream. I said, losing myself in my imagination. 
Just in my mind I was placing myself in the words I was saying to Eri, that Izuku can love me again and we get married to become Eri's mom. Tuck her in at night, tell her a bedtime story or one of the stories that Izuku can and I have lived and then put her to bed with a goodnight kiss. I would listen to her talk about her day at school, give her advice to help her, and we would all leave as a happy family. Izuku can and I would raise her and maybe give her a little brother so that we would all be happy. Just thinking about it makes me die. For these slight moments I want to ignore the cruel reality. Izuku Khan and I are not what we were before. Surely he does not love me and such a perfect future is unlikely to happen. But, dreaming is free and it's a way of thinking about what it would have been like if I hadn't messed things up with Izuku Khan. I snap out of my thoughts to Siri looking at me completely oblivious to my thoughts. My daddy already does all those things. I just want Amon to help him a little but without marrying him, he said calmly and I got intrigued. Why don't you want them to get married? I asked curiously, and she smiled broadly with joy. Because I told daddy that I would marry him when he grew up. I love my daddy, replied the sweet and adorable Iri and I smiled amused at her answer and then gently patted her head. You're very pretty Iri, your dad is very lucky, I replied following her game. I guess it's normal for girls her age to feel that amount of affection towards their parents to say things like that with such confidence. If I remember correctly it was called the electric complex that will disappear with time. But it is true that she will use Izuku Kun's image as a point of reference and comparison in the quality of the boy she meets. Honestly, in that aspect I more than agree, since Izuku Kun's way of being is exemplary and without a doubt, at least for me, it is perfect. If perhaps the only thing I would emphasize to him is his humility and heroism which are also his strengths, I would like him to boast a little more about his achievements and to be calmer in his job as a symbol of peace, in the news I could really be scared when I saw him put himself in danger to help others. But that's just the way he is and that's why I fell in love with him. I think I still love that thing about Izuku Kun. Fayumi Sensei, Iri told me, and I hadn't realized that she was smiling with affection and affection at my beautiful student. Tell me Iri, I said calmly and she holds one of my hands with her little hands as she looks me in the eye. Do you want to be my mom? She asked me with seriousness in her eyes and I froze, petrified and completely paralyzed as I felt my face burn and my body began to tremble. HHH, I asked, really surprised and perplexed by Iri's question. E, she wants me to be her mom. P, why does she say that? No, more importantly, can I? Or I mean I actually see it as very unlikely given the very complicated relationship I have with Izuku Kun in our past, but... If she wanted she could speak well of me to Izuku Kun and that way she can maybe, just maybe. Hi, it can be his mom. Sol was coming with his hands in his pockets. What's wrong? He asked and the other children were also approaching the two of us. I guess my scream caught their attention, that it's embarrassing that they had to listen to their teacher like this, they will really lose respect for me. What happened to you, Fayumi Sensei? Tauka asked me, and I was still nervous and my heart racing. TP well, you'll see, Edo. I stammered, smiling nervously and playing with my fingers making myself look ridiculous in front of my students. If it were just that easy to tell them what Iri and I were talking about, that's too complicated a topic for them to know. I returned to look at Tauka. I asked Fayumi Sensei if she wanted to be my mom, replied the little albino and I was surprised that he revealed it so easily while the others were curious watching him. Artoria approached Iri with a small smile. Midoriya chan, your dad must love Fayumi sensei for her to be your mom. He said to Iri who seemed to understand and bumped his little fist against his little hand to turn to look at me while I just stuttered quietly looking for the words to change the situation. Do you love daddy, Fayumi sensei? Asked Iri with innocence and curiosity in her very, very adorable little angel face. My eyes widen as I listen to him. I feel like my brain is about to explode as it overheated and steam starts coming out of my head. How could she ask me that? She's only known me for two days so she shouldn't ask me. D anyway, how do I answer him? Do I tell him that I love Izuku Khan and never stopped, or that I lie to him that I don't have feelings for him? Wait a minute, I'm not obligated to answer either, I just have to divert the conversation and your curiosity will pass. I smiled at them all as best I could. Yes, you know, we should go out to the park in the back for a while so you can have fun in the open air, I proposed to the seven little ones who were happy and accepted instantly, which means that I have been saved. I hope that this issue with Iri doesn't come up again too soon. If anything I would like to improve my relationship with Izuku Kun so that I can reach some resolution in my mind. At the moment I'm confused with what I want so it will be better to keep Iri distracted. Now I know that this little tender is very direct. After I took them out to the park I watched them sitting on the Ngawa, they were all having fun and talking to each other. Sol was the most mischievous of the most carefree at the time, I could see that at first glance he wants to become like he says a cool boy. But the truth is that he surreptitiously cares about others since he always makes sure that his antics do not hurt anyone. Shiro is, to put it in a way, a little hero. He says he wants to be a vigilante hero like his father and Izuku Khan. I'm pretty sure he doesn't quite understand the weight of those words but a hero is a hero and he wants to do good selflessly. He always offers to help and carry things to lighten the weight of others, and when Sol and Maka fight he acts as an intermediary to calm them down. 
Kenki is the quietest of the boys. He is shy and most of the time he just wants to read. He is also the one who spends the most time with the girls and I guess the latter is due to Tauka but I will mention that later. The little one, although he seems only focused on his reading, I have also seen him act kindly with others by offering them his books to read together. He is a very good child. Maka is a respectful, diligent, obedient and most of the time quiet girl. Curiously, even though she gets angry with Sol I can see that she has an attachment to him and gives him special treatment, although she seems a bit rough when hitting him. She surely only cares about him because when Sol almost got hurt on the slide she was the first to approach to check that he was okay. Luckily I only had to put a band-aid on him and he played tough even though he seemed to be that I was going to cry. Artoria is a quiet, intelligent girl and most of the time quiet. She only talks a lot when I read them a gentleman's story or when she meets the other girls to talk. If Maka is the one who calms Sol down then Artoria does the same with Shiru, but with the latter things are less conflictive and they are friendlier to each other, I guess because they are brothers. Tauka despite being calm and obedient gets angry relatively easily with Kanki for being so shy and introverted. I guess she plays the role of big sister for him since she normally makes the girls gather to play near Kanki in case Shiru or Sol in an oversight can hurt him. Basically, she takes care of Kanki as if it were her job, but I can see how she smiles when she sees him so calmly reading. Finally there would be Eri, she is the ray of sunshine of the group, so to speak she is the leader as much as Sol wants to deny it. She is the most cheerful and radiant of children, has a very amazing sense of right and wrong, is very clever at doing addition and subtraction, and reads almost as well as Kanki. In the two days she has been the first to encourage everyone to play and do things all together, she is the leader who encourages them and interacts with others. She was the first to make friends with everyone and so to speak in a way she made glue to unite them all. I wish I had been that little girl. But I can really understand why she's the way she is, her father. Izuku-kun must have taught her all those values and surely without noticing it she has been absorbing her way of being. Children are like a sponge, they absorb and do what they see. That is why it is normal to see so much resemblance between Uri and Izuku-kun since she admires him. He was also like that when we studied, but in the first year he was shy and unsure of himself. Either way, I have to say that so far Izuku-kun has done a great job raising Uri. When we went in to eat I could see how everyone was divided eating their own bentos that really looked luxurious for the most part, I will only eat a yakisoba bread later. From afar I can see how Iri seems really happy with her bento and stands up to share with the other children who followed her example and started sharing with each other, really Iri is the ray of sunshine from little heroes. I can't help but smile softly and amused to see the interactions of the seven little ones sharing and talking to each other. Their smiles are enough to put me at ease and give me a sense of sufficiency, they will all be great people when they grow up. Before I know it, I have Eri in front of me and extending her bento to me, which is almost empty except for two meatballs and pieces of apple that were on a separate stage. Anyway I'm confused, do you want to show me? I want you to drink some Fayumi Sensei, my daddy cooks very well, said this little tender looking me in the eyes and I smiled softly and then bent down at her height to caress her little head. You're very nice Eri, if you don't mind then I'll have a meatball, I said calmly and she nodded her head, to which I took one of the meatballs from her bento to bring it to my mouth and eat it with a smile on my face. After that moment I widened my eyes with surprise at that familiar taste. I can remember, it was a long time ago when Izuku-kun and I were dating in our second year. That day I wanted to make him something delicious since I was not a very good cook and I wanted to surprise him. At the end of the day I made something inedible and surely deadly but he still ate it with a smile on his face. Then he said he would make something for me and made me some little meatballs that were a family recipe. It these taste the same. After that day, there are few occasions when I was able to try them again and after we graduated, to this day I have not had the opportunity to delight myself with their cuisine. Aizuku-kun is still cooking excellent, and I'm glad. And it's not like I'm feeling kind of sad that the rich flavor is ruined by my bad memories considering how it all ended up between him and me, and I don't do it on purpose, it's just that. Memories come to me easily. Have Fayumi sensei asks rewardly, and I wake up from my thoughts to realize that I'm crying. I'm sorry for doing something bad to you, she says, bowing her head sadly and guiltily. I guess you think I'm crying because of you. It hurts me to see him like this. And you don't have to apologize, Uri. You didn't do anything wrong, just that your dad cooks very well, I said trying to sound as animated as possible while wiping my eyes. It's not really your fault, Uri. It's just mine. I'm very crying and you don't have to worry. You're a good girl who wouldn't do anything bad to someone. Sniff, he really. Eri asked me raising her cute little face to see me and I smiled at her with joy and kindness that covers the sadness I felt seconds ago. It just took me by surprise. You have nothing to worry about, Eri. Thank you for sharing with me. I thanked her while she wiped her eyes with her hand and then looked happy. You're welcome, Fayumi sensei said Eri with a big smile and I smiled gently to pat her head lightly. Eri is a very good girl. If I were to have a daughter one day I hope she would be like you. Then I watch as she lowers her head to see her bento and puffs out her cheeks adorably annoyed. I guess she realized that by sharing she had been left with only one meatball for herself. How cute. Fayumi, sensei called, looking up at me. Can I go see daddy? He asked me and I was a little surprised at his request, but I'm afraid I can't and I shook my head. 
He'll be busy teaching her. You better wait until he comes to pick you up, I said politely and as gently as possible so that she understood that she should wait to see Izuku Khan. After that, we both heard a little scream and turned to see how Sol had apparently dropped what little he had left of Bento and was now being scolded by Maka. The best thing is for me to intervene and without thinking much about it I approached them to clean and calm them down so that they could stay calm talking to each other. Luckily Sol didn't give it much importance. I guess he would already be satisfied but he told me that he would be more careful. After that I sigh a little and soon it will be time for them to take a little nap, so I dedicate myself to telling you to make sure that everyone is there. Sol and Shear were playing with soldiers, Kenki was reading, and next to him was Tauka playing with Artoria and Maka. Not seeing her, I guess she will be behind me and next to me so I turn to look at her, but she is not around me, so I feel worried and turn my head in different directions of the room in search of her white hair but I can't find anything. Harry disappeared. Okay, okay. Stay calm Fayumi and don't get upset. If you lose your composure the kids will get scared or worried and you don't want that. Just breathe and think, where would Harry be? The first thing I'll do is look in the bathrooms, the park, the other rooms and rooms of the nursery and in case she's not here it means that she went somewhere else in Yui. Ev, she said she wanted to see Izuku-kun, so she probably went to look for him. Okay, this is bad, I lost the daughter of the peace symbol, what kind of responsible teacher am I? First things first, I must go get her immediately, I will just put the children to sleep and call Midnight Sensei to keep an eye on them since she told me that she would be free to speak at this time. Surely she won't mind having an eye on them while I look for Iri. Please Iri, don't get in trouble. Don't look like Izuku-kun in that respect. Sono kai no sad aim. It, I sang not too loudly and with a big smile on my face as I carried my bento with my two little hands as I walked through the great corridors of Yui. That little song was sung by Sol very often and it's so contagious that without realizing it I was already singing it. When I get home I want to watch that series that he told me if my daddy allows it, but I doubt it's as good as AI-chan. I walk a lot from the nursery to this which is the main building where the big kids study. I'm finally here and I'm happy that every step makes me closer to my daddy's class, but I still don't know where he is and I haven't met anyone to ask me for directions. I see one of the doors open and out comes a brown-haired one-chan, followed by more one-chans and the other kids in her class. Hello. I greeted them all with a big smile as they stopped to look at me and fall into a short silence. Hello. I repeated just in case they hadn't heard me the first time, they have funny faces as they look at me. What's a girl doing in this place? Asked a green-haired one-chan as she looked at me intriguedly. I think it's because of a nursery that the director had built, said an orange-haired one-chan with a long ponytail. She is so cute, exclaimed a one-chan with blonde hair and horns on her head speaking in English. I don't know how to speak English but daddy does, I'll ask her what the one-chan with horns said. Hey hello little one, are you lost? Asked the brown-haired one-chan as she leaned over to look at me with a cute smile, this one-chan is very kind. I'm not lost, I'm looking for class 3A, do you know where it is? I asked them with a smile hoping they can give me the direction since I'm just a little disoriented, I'm not lost. Why are you looking for class 3A? Class B is more manly, said a boy with gray hair and strange eyelashes with a sharp smile. He looks like he has shark teeth, I hope he doesn't eat my bento. I just want to go to class 3A, please, I said hugging my bento with fear that the shark boy will eat the food I want to share with Pappy. Don't scare her Tetsu Tetsu, just let us talk, said the orange-haired one-chan to the rest of the boys in her class in a strict and serious way. One-chan seems trustworthy although she is a little scary. Then a black-haired, calm-faced one-chan approaches me to crouch down to my height. You see, little one, class 3 went to the Gamma Gym for a workout, so they are not in their classroom, one-chan told me calmly and I nodded my head. Where's that Gamma Gymnasium? I asked curiously, and a gray-haired one-chan, with her hands clasped like a dinosaur, approached me. I can take you if you want, he proposed, but I shook my head. No thanks one chan, I can do it on my own, thank you for helping me, I said to the one chans with a big smile, and then I turned around in the hallway and started walking away in search of that gamma gymnasium. I want to get there alone to tell daddy that I found him on my own with the power of love, I learned that from AI Chan, who says that love can conquer everything. So love, let's find daddy. Class 3B watched in disbelief as the adorable little girl walked away happily while singing the first opening of JoJo's. The boys were tempted to join them in the song but they were more focused along with the girls on the little girl. Some concern grew in them as they thought about what could happen to the girl if they let her walk on her own through the school, they just couldn't afford it. The little girl had certainly touched their hearts in just minutes and now the need to protect her was common throughout Class 3B who by looking at each other agreed to silently follow the girl to help her get to the Gamma Gymnasium. With the union of all her quirks they could achieve it if they set their minds to it, they just had to sneakily direct her to the campus where they would escort her there. After all, what kind of heroes would they be if they left a girl on her own? For the next few minutes they walked four meters behind the cheerful little Eri who walked with no idea where she was going. To make her spin down a corridor Yanagi used his quirk to throw marbles that attracted the attention of the little girl. To make her delicately go down the stairs Ibarra made a kind of ramp with her hair through which the girl walked carefully of the thorns. Also just in case Yanagi was prepared to use her quirk, or Kendo to catch her in case she fell, or Honuki prepared to soften the ground so she wouldn't get hurt, it was all a high caliber operation to get the little girl safely to her destination. 
Upon leaving the main building, Tetsu Tetsu and the other boys stood guard to notice the presence of a teacher at any moment, as they were supposed to meet Ken in the staff room. But apparently they would have to be reprimanded for not getting there. Setsuna climbed on the horns that Pony ejected to both fly and have an aerial view of the little girl who was walking in the direction of the pool, so Setsuna separated a piece of hand so that it fell next to the girl capturing her attention. Then Setsuna just made her hand start walking in the right direction to the Gamma Gymnasium while being followed by a curious Iri who was running a bit to try and catch up with her. She was a brave girl to not be afraid of a hand moving on its own. In the end, after a torturous 15 minutes, they were able to appreciate how the little girl finally focused on the Gamma Gymnasium that had its doors open, implying that Class 3 was there, which made little Iri happy and relieved Class 3B that they would only make sure to see what the little girl would have planned to do with the sister class. Of course, this was mostly Monoma's idea that he just wanted to see them practice with the peace symbol to find some way to take advantage. Izuku stood in front of his class in his normal attire and with his hands in the pockets of his robe while his students wore their respective hero costumes. The green-haired man saw them all with a slight smile on his face while the young men had a range of expressions, worry, fear, anxiety, excitement, and other insecurities. All these things were normal after all, because they would be about to face the symbol of peace, the hero who was at the top and was their teacher. Very good everyone, I already told you all the details but I will repeat it again, Izuku said to his students calmly. You can come with everything without worrying, I won't attack, I'll only use a 5% quirk to capture them with capture tape, there's no time limit and you can use any kind of strategy against me. It's 20 against 1, the green-haired man told them with complete calm and serenity despite the fact that from any point of view he was at a disadvantage. How will we know we've won or passed the test? Asked Edda curiously as she raised a hand. When they've managed to knock me unconscious, replied the green-haired man seriously, causing some uneasiness in his students, except in Bakugu, who was more motivated. Just kidding, when you manage to do me considerable damage then the test will end, remember that this is just a method by which I will evaluate you both individually, and in group cooperation. Izuku added more relaxed and smiling amused at the expressions of his students who had beads of sweat on the back of their necks. Are you sure that we should all be against you? Asked Yuraka a little worried about her master who although he was the strongest of the heroes, he was about to compete against 20 different quirks and among them were the big three which were Mirio, Bakugu and Todoroki. The rest of the girls in the class had the same concern, they didn't want to do something like fight their kind teacher. Please don't underestimate me, for the moment you see me as an opponent to beat, you don't have to worry about me. Izuku said to the brunette and the other girls with a kind and gentle smile to reassure them, which worked and made them blush slightly. I'm ready to mash you, Deku, exclaimed Bakugu with a menacing and hostile smile, as well as small explosions from his palms seeking to intimidate the hero who remained stoic. Ready, Izuku said calmly, and received a nod from his class. Ready, he continued, without taking his hands out of his pockets while his twenty students were on guard to begin the strategy they had prepared with so much effort. Start. He was going to exclaim but is interrupted. No, exclaimed Iri wordly and running adorably in the direction of her father who was perplexed when he saw him there while his class were confused to see that beautiful little girl in that place. Mina, Toru, and Nejire specifically wanted to squeeze the little angel who was approaching with a bento in her little hands. Iri, asked Izuku surprised and bending down to receive Iri in his arms to pick her up and stroke her head, he really had no idea why his daughter would be there. She was supposed to be in the nursery under Fayumi's care. Who is that girl, Jiro? asked Suyu curiously, seeing the little girl who was in her teacher's arms and hugging his neck protectively. Izuku was about to speak, but his daughter beat him to it. Don't hurt daddy. Iri yelled at the twenty aspiring heroes of class 3 with apparent annoyance as she could see how they were about to start attacking her dad who could well defeat them all with one hand. It was at that very moment that class 3 widened their eyes with surprise, while the same thing happened to class 3B who watched everything from the door of the gymnasium. Then the surprise intensified even more and together they all let out a big one at the same time. W-H-A-T-E-E. With several about to fall to the ground from the sudden surprise and with the girls of both classes really stunned by this sudden news that it really affected them especially for some reason. No one could say anything because their brains were working at full power to process the sudden revelation of the little girl hugging the green-haired man's breast, reassuring him with paternal affection and a small smile to reassure the little girl. E-R-I-I-I, shouted Fayumi arriving at the gymnasium upset and a little disheveled to see inside and bump into the forty young people next to Izuku who had the little albino in his arms. Fayumi, asked Shoto calmly when he saw his elder sister in that place, he didn't expect to see him in the Gamma Gymnasium. If he connected the dots he could deduce that his sister was taking care of his master's apparent daughter and she escaped him and that's why he was looking for her. The Todoroki, seeing Iri in her father's arms, was relieved and calmed, sighing tiredly and then remembering that she was in front of forty teenagers and Izuku who were now witnesses of how careless she was as a teacher, which made her nervous and start playing with her fingers because of the looks that the boys especially had on her, did he have anything on his face. 
Well, actually Minda and a few other guys were watching more than the face of the beautiful young woman that is Fayumi. As Sensei, Momo said, trembling a little and raising her hand to speak. Q, who is that girl? Asked the president of class a while Kendo representing class B nodded his head followed by the other 38 students who had the same question as both of them. They wanted to confirm if it is really true that the symbol of peace and the greatest hero in the world had as a daughter the adorable girl with white hair with whom he had no physical resemblance. Both Izuku and he returned to look at everyone in the place, both Class B and as well as Fayumi who was involved in the whole mess. She's a Remitoria and she's my daughter, I'm a Remitoria and I'm daddy's daughter. They both replied Midoriya simultaneously smiling with the same joyful expressions. Chapter 7, Class 3 A vs. The Deku Hero we found ourselves inside the Gamma Gymnasium where classes 3A and 3B were perplexed by the surprising revelation that the peace symbol Deku had a cute and adorable daughter. Said girl was sitting in one of the arms of her father who carried him affectionately despite still being surprised by the presence of his little girl in that place. Izuku turned his attention to Iri. What are you doing here, Iri? You should be in the nursery with the other children, he said, a little intrigued, seeing his little girl who had taken him by surprise when she arrived suddenly before the fight began. Hiri smiled broadly and with her two little hands extended her bento to her father. I came to share my apple pieces with you, daddy, replied the albino with beautiful red eyes who was happy to have found her dad. Izuku was moved, but he still had more questions to ask his daughter. Did you come without Fayumi's permission? He asked his daughter with a bit of seriousness. The little girl nodded innocently. Yes, I'd come for a little while and then I'd go back to Fayumi-sensei, Hiri replied, smiling happily and completely ignoring that she did something she shouldn't have done. Fayumi approached father and daughter to address the green-haired man. I'm so sorry Izuku-kun, I focused on the other children for a moment and when I turned around Iri was gone, Fayumi apologized really sorry and then bowed her head. I'm really sorry, said the Todoroki feeling like a bad teacher to have lost a student, now her ineptitude was observed by the young man who was the girl's father and the forty students who surrounded them. You don't have to apologize Fayumi, you should have been busy, Izuku said to Fayumi with a small sympathetic and gentle smile making her raise her head even feeling guilty. He understood her, it was perhaps too much for her to take care of seven children, they could be a little noisy and restless and it would not be very difficult for one of them to escape her. But it's not that he didn't feel a little angry, not at Fayumi, not at Iri, but at the situation, he was just angry that his daughter had been without surveillance or protection, he felt angry at himself for not being the one who had an eye on Iri. Izuku turned to look at Iri sternly. Iri, you shouldn't have left that way, said the young father to his daughter, who shrank a little in his gaze. But daddy, Iri said, trying to explain and defend herself. No ifs, ands, ands, beats, you can't leave the kindergarten without Fayumi's permission, do you understand? Izuku said to Iri to reprimand him and put some character on him, even if he was being seen by all the students. He had to use his role as a father to teach his daughter a lesson. Little Iri lowered her head a little while her eyes began to moisten as her dad was scolding her. But I just wanted to share my bento with you, said the little turn who struggled not to cry as she looked at her white bento. She just wanted to eat with her father, she had no idea what she had done wrong. Still, Hiri, you don't know how much you worried Fayumi, Izuku said to her daughter more softly as she looked at him, hoping she would understand her mistake. Hiri looked up to see Fayumi standing in front of her. Sniff. I'm sorry, said the little girl with a few tears on the edge of her eyes while her tone was a little broken by the tears she was enduring. And I didn't want to. Sniff, I didn't want to worry you. Fayumi-sensei, apologized the repentant girl looking at her teacher who smiled kindly at her. Don't worry, Iri. The important thing is that nothing happened to you. Fayumi replied to Iri kindly and really relieved that nothing happened to the little angel. While the most that could have happened to her in the protected facilities is some slight bump or scrape. Something that recovery girl could treat without any problem. After all, heroin had healed the horrific wounds Izuku has inflicted on himself in the past. The little girl put a fist to her tearful eye to rub it while keeping her head down sadly. She certainly didn't stop looking adorable but that didn't take away from the fact that those present didn't like to see her in that state. The girl's father began to rub her head with his free hand. Stop crying, princess, Izuku asked his daughter with kindness and a small smile since he preferred to see that cute cheerful expression on Iri's face. Piba daddy, you're upset with me, Iri said, raising her head a little with slightly swollen cheeks while she opened her eyelids slightly to show her wet eyes. Izuku smiled at him gently and warmly as she looked him straight in the eye. I'm not upset, Iri. I'm happy that you're okay and that you wanted to share with me, he replied, caressing his daughter's beautiful hair with affection. But I'm worried that you're going to go alone again and something could happen to you, she added as she brought her head closer to her to connect his forehead to Iri's to see him directly. Please promise me you won't do it again, Izuku asked his daughter lovingly as he closed his eyes. The little girl closed her eyes, calmer by her father's words, and smiled a little. I promise, Daddy, Hiri replied and then hugged Izuku's neck affectionately and he returned the hug with a paternal smile on his face. Thank you, Hiri. I don't know what I would do if something happened to you, Izuku said, caressing his daughter's back affectionately while she smiled amusedly with her eyes closed because of her father's green curls that tickled her a little. Izuku really hated having to scold her, something that has only happened on so few occasions that you can count them on the fingers of one hand. 
Harry had always been an obedient, calm, cheerful, and adorable girl with incredible ease. She had not had many problems in terms of her upbringing since she easily picked up when he taught her something. That's why the few occasions where she did something wrong was because he hadn't told her before not to do it as is the case now. If he had told her that she should ask Fayumi for permission then she wouldn't have escaped. Izuku was really not exaggerating when he said that what he wanted most in this world is that beautiful and innocent girl. He has raised her for three years and has committed to take care of her for the rest of her life. Quite simply, her new dream, above being the symbol of peace, is to live long enough to see her fulfill her own dreams with a big smile on her face, to live long enough to see her become the great woman she is meant to be. For those reasons he had to give everything to be the best father for her. He had to teach her what was right and what was wrong, what was good and bad, what things he should be careful of. He had to give her all the love and affection she deserves. He had to put her as his number one priority. Being a hero had become a means to make the world a better place, a safer place for her. Certainly she made the small mistake of leaving the nursery without permission, but now he had to make sure that something like that didn't happen again. He had to be a better father to her so that she would be safe and happy. That little incident only motivated him more to be a great father to his daughter. Out of the young master's thoughts, in the eyes of Fayumi and the other young men, the paternal scene they were witnessing was touching, if perhaps the only one who was not affected was Bakugou who was more impatient for the combat. Fayumi and the girls of both classes smiled moved by the paternal affection that the green-haired man shows for his beautiful daughter. At first glance it is easy to see that he is a great father by the way he faced the situation and addressed her with severity caused by the love and concern he feels for the girl. Here he took off from the hug with a big smile at the green-haired man. Nothing will happen to me because daddy is always going to save me, right? Said the little sweetness tilting her little head a little and causing the most sensitive in the place to feel an overload of tenderness because of the little girl. Izuku smiled slightly at his daughter. True, I'll always be by your side to protect you, my pretty princess. He said to Uri caressing her cheek gently and affectionately and then placing a lock of her hair behind her ear. And then giving her a chaste kiss on the cheek, to which Uri laughs happily enjoying her dad's affection. Well, something curious happened in the minds of the girls present in the place, and that is that those same words were repeated in their minds along with the actions of the green-haired man as if he was addressing them instead of Eri. This caused the faces of absolutely all of them to turn as red as tomatoes just thinking that the attractive and gentle man would dedicate such a show of affection to them. Fayumi particularly blushed a little as she was certainly familiar with the green-haired man's displays of affection before. At no time had she forgotten the kisses he gave her as well as sometimes she stole some from him. However, now seeing that gentle and affectionate expression directed towards Uri, she really felt that her heart was beating hard as if she was screaming at her to jump towards that man to make him hers in a way. No. He clearly ignored that fleeting thought and remained happy to see the loving father-daughter moment. Izuku turned his attention away from Uri to look at Class 3 calmly again. Very good class, I'm going to ask you to give me a few moments, he said to his twenty students since he had to attend to the presence of his daughter, and the appearance of class 3B in the place. See of course Midoriya sensei, and no problem, Momo replied speaking on behalf of her class, but it was curious to see her smiling nervously with a blush on her cheeks as she watched her teacher, most likely the beautifying image she had of the green-haired man had not yet passed. Then Izuku still with Iri in his arms placed himself at the front of the 3B class with a calm but at the same time authoritarian air. It was actually easy to identify that in the place he was the one who was in control because of his capable aura and the achievements that precede him. After all he is the pinnacle of heroism in the world, it was really easy to feel small in his presence. Who is the president of class 3B? Izuku asked calmly, looking at the 20 can students who for some reason were there. Then Itsuka took a few steps forward with a small blush on her cheeks. Why I, Itsuka Kendo from Class 3B, introduced himself with some shyness to show his face on behalf of his classmates. Very well Miss Kendo, what is the reason why you are here? As far as I remember I set aside the gym for us, Izuku said to the orange-haired girl calmly while Iri in her arms only smiled innocently seeing Itsuka. Vivira, what happens is that we saw Iri looking for Class 3 and since we were worried we escorted her here. Kendo replied with a small smile and trying to keep her composure in front of the peace symbol that was in front of her and there was a noticeable difference in height. Iri tilted her head slightly in intrigue. Really, I didn't see them, one Chan and the others are spies exclaimed the little girl with a big smile seeing Itsuka and the other students of Class 3B, bringing several smiles to the boys and touching the girls who wanted to squeeze the little girl. Manama in particular only boasted about the skills of her class arrogantly. Izuku listened to what the young girl said and nodded. Okay, first of all I have to let Kansen know that you are with me, he said calmly taking out his phone to send a message to his colleague and then putting his phone back in his robe to focus his attention on Class 3B again. I'm indebted to you, the green-haired man thanked, smiling kindly and lowering his head a little, an action that caught the students a little off guard. And no need as sensei, we were just doing the right thing, Kendo said to the green-haired professor with a nervous smile and shaking his hands in front of him to reassure him. It was somewhat awkward to receive the thanks of hero number one in such an honest way. Thank them, Hiri, Izuku said to Hiri with a small smile and the girl nodded her head and then looked at the 20 students of class 3B. 
Thank you all very much, thanked Uri with a big smile on her face and then lowered her head a little and then raised it again. With that simple gesture the young people of Class B felt that their effort to bring the girl safely had been completely worth it, even though Kan could possibly reprimand them. Fayumi, Izuku said, addressing the young woman with two-tone hair this time. Yes, yes, asked Fayumi a little nervous and expectant of what the green-haired man would say, still hoping that he would get a little annoyed with her for having neglected Uri. Shouldn't you be in the nursery? Izuku asked calmly and a little curiously, and she relieved herself and slowly shook her head. Midnight Sensei did me the favor of relieving me while I was looking for Uri. Now she is taking care of them right now while they take a nap. Fayumi replied with a small smile remembering having to thank her former teacher for the great help she was giving her. Izuku smiled in amusement at what Fayumi said. It's true, Nimiri sensei likes children, he said turning to Siri who was smiling at him sweetly and innocently. Maybe it wasn't much but now he had a better impression of his former teacher and current colleague who has undoubtedly shown him in the past how good she was at taking care of small children. After that, Izuku and Fayumi began to exchange a few words while both classes and B got together to chat while watching the scene with curiosity and intrigue. Who is that girl? asked Shinso, openly intrigued by the identity of the young woman who had arrived at the scene. Do you know her, Todoroki-kun? Asked Yuraka to her mixed film friend who bore a certain resemblance to her, even remembering hearing him say Fayumi when he saw her. Todoroki only turned his head to look at his two companions with his usual calmness. She's my older sister, her name is Fayumi, Shoto replied and the rest of those present were a little surprised to now know that he and the young woman were family. Hell Todoroki, your sister is great, exclaimed Minda excited like the pervert he is while practically eating Fayumi with his eyes, which angered the girls present and irritated Todoroki a little. Don't even say it, she's a beauty, said Siro smiling sideways with her arms behind her neck looking up and down the body of the sexy and beautiful woman. Very attractive curves and has the perfect measurements. She could certainly compete against midnight in beauty. Man, I'm so envious that you live under the same roof as her. Kaminari commented with a hint of jealousy in her tone as she had her eyes fixed on Fayumi who ignored all the comments directed at her person for being so distracted talking to Izuku and Eri. They shouldn't make comments like that, Yosu said, calmly crossing his arms and glancing sideways at the three most perverted boys in Class 3A. It's certainly very attractive, but they can stop being vulgar, Honkuni seconded, sighing a little disappointed that they weren't at least more discreet. We are men, let us act like one, Minter replied with arrogance and a smile of superiority that was erased and replaced by a grimace of pain when she felt two powerful blows to her head. Those blows were delivered by Momo and Kendo who had the rest of the girls of both classes behind her. You don't count like a man, said the fifteen girls, with earnest and withering glances fixed on the dirty little grape-haired patch that writhed in pain on the floor. Seiko regained her composure with her serene expression as she approached Todoroki. Then why is your sister here? Seiko asked the boy with two-tone hair who was keeping quiet. She works as a teacher in the new kindergarten that was built in Yui. Todoroki replied simply and easily since he had been informed of this for almost a week, but the others in his class who did not know were surprised. Is there a nursery in Yui? asked Kayoyuka, confused and intrigued by this revelation. Why? asked Mina curiously and tilting her head slightly. Yui was the best hero academy in the world. Why would they have a nursery for children? Setsuna took a few steps forward with her hands on her waist. We don't know either. We only found out from Monoma, Takage replied as she pointed her thumb at the blonde man behind her. Information is a very valuable resource, especially if it serves to surpass Class 3A. Yo ha ha ha, said Monoma with his usual arrogant smile to start laughing maniacally. The rest did not pay attention to him. After all the competitive behavior of the blonde is the bread and butter since first year. So Todoroki's sister is Iri's teacher, asked Kanoko curiously as she and the rest focused their gazes on the girl with two-tone hair who smiled sweetly as she watched Izuku speak kindly with a cheerful Iri. That relieves me a bit, although she seems to get along very well with Midoriya Sensei. Jiro, Tsuyu commented with a slight discomfort watching the scene, which she unknowingly shared with the other girls who also felt a little uncomfortable seeing the young woman get along so well with father and daughter. Todoroki narrowed his eyes, focusing mostly his attention on his green-haired master. I think, said Shoto calmly and catching the attention of some. What do you say, Todoroki? asked Kiruaro, seeing Todoroki who seemed to be saying something. I, I think I've seen Midoriya Sensei before, Todoroki said with a bit of seriousness while very small scenes flashed through his mind, he was sure he had seen him in other circumstances. We've all seen him before, he's the number one hero, exclaimed Tetsu Tetsu smiling full of masculine excitement for the symbol of peace that he has seen fought on television countless times around the globe, he simply had to live under a rock not to know about his exploits all over the world. Yes, he's a man among men, said Kirishima, just as excited as Tetsu Tetsu, and then they both clashed arms with brotherhood and smiling with their sharp teeth in the same opinion of hero number one. I don't mean it that way, I've known him before he was the symbol of peace, Shoto said as he made a small effort to remember but it was difficult. How did you meet him before? Mirio asked intriguingly as she moved a little closer to her mixed-haired partner. I don't remember it well, but I'm sure I've seen him talk to Fayumi before, Todoroki replied staring at the interaction between his teacher 
and his older sister. He definitely remembered seeing Fayumi smiling like that in the past. It was a long time ago but he would try to remember the reason why he sensed having seen his teacher in the past. It was very familiar to him. Back with Izuku, Hiri and Fayumi. The little girl for a few moments kept looking at the large number of teenagers who were watching them and then she looked up to see her father. Daddy, Hiri said, catching the attention of Izuku who stopped talking to Fayumi to both focus their attention on the girl. What's wrong, Hiri? Izuku asked his daughter, smiling kindly to hear what he had to say. Who are your students? Asked Hiri, intrigued and pointing with a hand to all the young people who were in the place. Oh, let me introduce them to you, said the green-haired man, smiling more cheerfully to walk to the front of his class who, by wearing their hero costumes, were distinguishable from the 3B class who had strayed a little. These 20 would-be heroes you see here are my students. This is class 3A, Izuku said introducing Eri to his students, some of whom responded by waving to the little girl who was in her teacher's arms. Nice to everyone, said Eri to her dad's students with a cute and adorable smile as she greeted them with one hand while with the other she carried the white scarf that covers her bento. A few small breezes momentarily blinded some of them and when they regained their composure they saw how Nejair had moved to be in front of Izuku and Eri, and he was smiling broadly seeing the pretty girl in front of him. Are you Midoriya sensei's daughter? Why don't you look almost anything alike? What is your mother like? Is she very cute? Nejair asked the little albino with curiosity and everyone had drops on their temples when they saw him questioning the girl. But the students let her be since they were also curious about those questions, especially if the young professor really had a wife. Eri, out of feeling uncomfortable by the questions, just frowned a little as she placed one of her little hands on Izuku's cheek. Yes, I'm daddy's daughter, since I'm just like daddy and he's just like me. Hiri replied adorably annoyed since she didn't like that there was any doubt that her dad is her dad, which touched Izuku and caused some to laugh amused. Then the little girl calmed down and prepared to answer the other questions, so she put a finger to her chin. I don't have mom, it's just me and my daddy, Hiri replied innocently, seeing the one Chan in front of her, who for some reason breathed a sigh of relief. Was the collective thought of the forty students who had their eyes set on the young green-haired teacher who now had more respect for that single detail. Particularly the girls saw him with better eyes now that they knew that he took care of Eri by himself. Then Eri looks at her little hand to start counting. But there are also my grandparents, my Uncle Hawks, my Uncle Aizawa, Aunt Emmy, said the little tenderness until she ran out of fingers in her little hand and the other one was busy so she couldn't go on counting. My family is very big, exclaimed Eri in surprise, looking up at her father, who smiled with amusement and nodded his head. Thought Fayumi touched by the adorable girl who apparently had that affection for the blonde. Fayumi knew perfectly well that Izuku and Hawks remained best friends all the time but she did not expect that Hawks would be considered family by little Eri of whom she only found out about her existence the day before. Thought the forty students watching Eri since it was difficult to imagine what it was like to have the strict black haired as a relative. Anyway she did not seem traumatized when mentioning him so they could only assume that she was fond of the teacher and professional hero who apparently is closer to Izuku than they thought. He returned her attention back to Nejair who was standing in front of her. I don't know why I have to have a mom, but Fayumi sensei told me that a mom would help daddy as his assistant, Hiri said to the blue-haired woman and hearing from everyone who turned to see the Todoroki who got a little nervous. P, it seems that you misunderstood me a bit, Fayumi said, smiling a little embarrassed and playing with her fingers at the way Hiri interpreted everything she said. If a mom is good to help daddy, then I want one, Hiri said innocently to Izuku, who stiffened upon hearing her request. Q, do you want a mom? Asked Izuku smiling tensely and with a bead of sweat running down his cheek. The truth is that he hoped that at some point Eri was going to make that request. But he hoped that it would be in private and not in front of 40 students and Fayumi. No doubt his daughter was putting him on the ropes. Eri nodded. Yep, Artoria, she told me that you have to want Fayumi sensei to be my mom. She said to her father as she raised her hand to point at Fayumi who turned as red as a tomato when she heard him. And then it's not like that Eri, exclaimed Fayumi very nervously and shaking her hands in front of her so that the girl would not embarrass her any more in front of Izuku and the students. The last thing she wanted was to make things more uncomfortable between her and Izuku. No, asked Eri, intrigued and curious, tilting her head slightly to the side. Inagi took a few steps forward with his expressionless face to lend his help with the misunderstanding. After all it made him a little sad to see Miss Fayumi get flustered by the girl's compromising words. The girl from class be headed straight towards Eri. You see, a girl must love Midoriya Sensei and Midoriya Sensei must love a girl in the same way, Yanagi said to the little girl calmly so that she could understand the subject better. Oh, Yuri said, opening her mouth slightly as she understood what the one Chan had told her. So any girl can be my mom. Yuri asked Ryaiko innocently, causing the gray-haired woman and the other girls in the place to tense up and blush slightly. Be basically, Yanagi replied a little blushing and looking away in another direction as she felt a little uncomfortable at the thought that the green-haired master was watching her. Yuri looked up at her father. Daddy, do you want any of the one chans or Fayumi sensei? Can any of them be my mom? 
asked Izuku who became stiff as a rock and more drops of sweat ran down his forehead while all the women in the place focused their gazes intensely on the green-haired man waiting to hear his answer. Izuku didn't quite understand it, but he sensed that these questions were like bear traps. If he answered them he would be trapped with no possibility of fleeing, and that the looks he received for some reason were like rifle barrels that threatened him and demanded clear and concise answers. The green-haired man looked down kindly to smile at his daughter. Those are not good questions, Iri, Izuku said to Iri gently and calmly to try to get out of answering. After all, as a teacher he couldn't have that kind of relationship with students besides that his issues with Fayumi were already a thing of the past. Thought all those present with sincere disbelief that he had really escaped from answering those questions that could undoubtedly put him in a great predicament. The girls were specifically disappointed but then they were confused by the reason for their disappointment. They returned to see the students in both classes who were united. Do you love my daddy? If you love him then it can be my mom. She asked the 15 teenagers who were very pretty and surely they were kind. Anyway she didn't have many standards for the girl who would be her mom, only that she helped her daddy as a secretary. The girls blushed at the girl's question, but a pink hand was raised from among them, and they all turned away in surprise to see that Mina had raised her hand with a big smile and then made her way to the front of the girl. I'd be happy to be your mommy, Hiri-chan, Mina said to the cute and adorable girl she wanted to squeeze and pamper with affection. Of course she also said that with a certain mischievous air seeing her green-haired teacher who tensed up like all the girls in the place. Really, then my daddy has to love you too, Hiri said to the pink one-chan with a cute smile glad to find someone who could help her daddy. Mina smiled at the little girl and gave her a thumbs up. I'll work on that, Hiri-chan, count me in, said Ishido to little Midoriya, who nodded her head under the incredulous gaze of everyone present. Izuku just smiled a little at Mina. Heh, very funny Miss Ishido, he said to his student hoping that honestly what he had said was just a joke since she was the joker and extrovert of the class, surely he had only said that to Iri to play along, for no other reason. Mina only winked at him coquettishly and then returned to the group, followed by an incredulous Yanagi and Nejire who were still just as surprised as the rest by the actions of the hairy woman who kept a big smile on her face. Iri, who is the cause of the whole situation, was completely oblivious to all the chaos she was causing. So to speak, she is an adorable apple of discord that at that time was complicating her father's love life. Either way, the little albino turned her attention back to her dad's students. Does my daddy play with you? Iri asked class 3. Why were they confused just like Izuku? Play, asked Tamaki confused, and the little girl nodded her head. Like letting them draw or read them some stories, Iri explained with a big smile, causing Izuku to finally understand what she meant and let out a small laugh. Izuku carefully carried it with both hands to lift it a little into the air. Ee, do you want to see us play, Iri? Izuku asked Iri with a slight smile while the little girl was happier with the sparkle in her eyes. Yes, I do, replied Iri excitedly, stretching her arms and legs, causing her father to smile in amusement and then slowly put her on the ground. Very well, Izuku said and then turned to Fayumi who was next to him. Fayumi, if it's not too much trouble, could you take care of Iri? I want to show you how we play, he asked the red tufted albino with a bit of emphasis on the last word, which for some reason gave class 3 a bad feeling. Fayumi instantly understood what Izuku meant and covered a small laugh with a hand over her mouth. I don't have a problem, but is it safe for me to see it? She asked the green-haired man with a small smile. Don't worry, Izuku replied, then turned to look directly at his students. There will be no bad words, will there, class? He asked his students with an innocent and angelic smile and then tilted it slightly to the side. The vast majority of the class instinctively turned to see the same person, who was none other than Bakugu who was looking to turn to look at someone but everyone had their eyes on him, to which he got frustrated and clicked his tongue. TCH, don't just look at me, Bakugu said, irritated and crossing his arms. Izuku nodded contentedly and then turned to look at Ken's students. Class 3B, Izuku said, looking at the 20 students who were paying attention to him. Ken sent is on his way to pick you up, until then if you like you can see how we train, the green-haired man offered them with a small smile. Monoma stepped forward to speak. Gladly Deku-sensei, we will pay exclusive attention to the three a class, said Monoma with a small smile, and with his hands crossed behind his back, it was more than clear that he only wanted to see the advance of the rival class. Okay, you can all take a seat in the stands, Izuku said to those who would be the spectators of the little fight he would have against his class. Fayumi took Iri's hand as they went along with class 3B to the small bleachers of the place where they sat. The little albino girl sat on Fayumi's lap while the seven girls in class B had sat around the Todoroki, mostly as a barrier to protect her from her male classmates who, while not Minda, were still boys. Izuku stood again with a small calm smile in front of his students as he held his hands inside the pockets of his white coat. Very well, I'll repeat it briefly, attack me with everything. I'll only defend myself with a quirk at 5% and the fight ends when I decide to. Izuku told them summarizing the characteristics of the combat while the three at class nodded as they prepared to start. 
That's very tough. It's twenty against one. They outnumber him, Ibarra said from the stands, her hands clasped worried about the red-haired teacher. It will certainly be very difficult for him to fight the whole class at once even if he is the number one hero. Kendo said with his arms crossed seriously with his eyes fixed on Izuku who remained calm and relaxed despite the fact that he looked out class. After all both she and the rest of the 3B class had checked well the potential that the 3A class had. I don't think they should worry about Izuku-kun, they should worry about class 3A, Fayumi said with a small smile addressing class 3B who focused their attention on her. Why do you say that, miss? Asked Kanoko of the young woman sitting next to her. My name is Fayumi Todoroki, it's a pleasure to meet you. Fayumi introduced herself politely with a small smile and then had her eyes set on the battle zone. Just keep an eye on the fight and you'll know what I'm talking about. She told the young would-be heroes who also focused their attention on the encounter that was about to begin. Are you going to fight daddy in this game? Uri asked Fayumi, raising her head curiously to see her teacher's face. Yes, Uri, who do you think is going to win? Fayumi asked the little girl kindly. Daddy is always going to win, replied Uri, smiling cheerfully and sure of her dad's victory, which touched Fayumi and the girls of Class B. Class 3 were already positioned and ready to go, so Izuku pulled his phone out of his robe. Very good, Izuku said as his body wrapped himself in 5% one for all and pulled the duct tape and his phone out of his pockets. Get started. The green-haired man exclaimed and then threw his phone in the air, causing the class's attention to be drawn to the mobile. Izuku during those seconds quickly moved his eyes among the formation of his students, as he expected they had a formation raised by his quirks. The melee attackers were in front while the long-range ones were behind. Bakugou, Todoroki and Mirio lead them all for being the big three, possibly they would be the ones who would go on the attack first, no, the first would be Bakugou followed by long range attacks. In the second wave were Tamaki, Kirishima, Yuraka, Ida, Shinso, Tsuyu and Siro. Perhaps the ones who would take the most superiority would be Tamaki and Kirishima to distract him along with Todoroki and Bakugou so that Yuraka can nullify his gravity. In the third wave there was Nejire, Shouji, Mainta, Takoyami and Mina, they would be the ones who can attack at a medium and precise range, Shouji would be a kind of shield for those behind who would be Toro, Momo, Kaminari and Jiru who were the long range strike team that behind them protected Seiko, surely he was the mastermind behind the strategies they would employ. This is something Izuku-kun did a lot, Fayumi said, capturing the attention of the students in class B he creates a distraction to study his opponents in detail to devise various strategies for the information he collects. She said while with a small smile she watched as his phone began to descend. The green-haired man finished his analysis and just caught his phone in his hands while his eyes were dull and bored. It was at that moment that, just as he predicted, the one who took the initiative in the attack was Katsuki who propelled himself with his explosions towards him. Kaminari then directed a few beams at his teacher while Nejire sent out some airwaves that leveled out at the same speed as the ashy blonde who had a wild smile on his face. Boom, Katsuki's explosion aimed at Izuku's face, but he calmly only tilted his body to the side to avoid it and so did the shockwave. But Kaminari's attack and Nejire's attack were coming in that direction they had foreseen in advance. Thought Seiko who was the strategist of the plan they had decided to use. Nejire released more waves, Minta threw some of his spheres, Mina released brief samples of acid while behind Jiru released some sound waves from his amplifiers. All the attacks went in the direction of the green-haired man who remained serene while Bakugou was already preparing to make another explosion with his other arm. The green-haired man only gave a small jump of the balls of his feet to propel himself and get away from the first attacks. He took distance from Bakugou who propelled himself in his direction while the rest of the attacks came quickly. Izuku bent his upper body forward while keeping his hands in his pockets and then took momentum from the balls of his feet and moved underneath Bakugou who widened his eyes in surprise. The young master was heading straight towards the attacks that were directed at him and with abnormal ease and superhuman reflexes he dodged them as if they were in slow motion. Of course to the human eye it was only perceptible as the dust rose as he passed leaving a trail of emerald rays. It was not difficult for him to reach Mirio and Todoroki in a matter of seconds who widened their eyes when they saw him so close Bakugou for his part was already heading towards them again but he would have to refrain from using his explosion so as not to hurt them. Long range attacks were also stopped as they could hurt their teammates and would backfire. Izuku smiled slightly as he held up a finger. Note number one, make a formation that doesn't collapse with your opponent's first move, said the green-haired man calmly and then watched as Tamaki transformed his arms into strong tentacles to attack him fiercely along with Kirishima who hardened his skin. Also from behind Dark Shadow approached the attack while Todoroki took distance since he could not use his ice with his teammates present. The gentle master grabbed Kirishima's arm and then grabbed his grip and lunged in the direction of Bakugou so that they both collided. But the ashy blonde grabbed the redhead's hand to throw him back in the direction of Izuku who leaned his body back to dodge Kirishima's kick that was coming in conjunction with a lunge from Tamaki's arm. Mirio had disappeared from the scene while Shinso threw several bandages at him to try to catch him. Yuraka also took the initiative and prepared to close the distance. Minda, meanwhile, threw two spheres at Izuku to try to pin him down. The symbol of peace saw each movement in his direction with the same bored expression, as if each movement had already been foreseen beforehand. Surely they wanted to immobilize him with the spheres of mind on his feet to hit him to the ground. 
then Shinso would hold him with his bandages so that Yuraka would nullify gravity. In case he avoided him, they would have Mirio who would come out under the earth to attack him, and if he arrived to avoid him, he would have to watch out for Dark Shadow. Tamaki and Kirishima who were already waiting for their moment to attack, not to mention that Bakugu was only a few meters away and Todoroki at any moment could freeze the ground to try to stop him. Izuku, in spite of everything that was coming his way, remained unchanged, and then time resumed its normal course. The green-haired man tilted his head slightly forward to dodge a blow that came from Kirishima, said blow blocked Minda's first sphere. Then the green-haired man quickly grabbed the redhead to raise him as a shield so that with his other hand the other sphere would stick to him then he threw him towards Shinso's bandages so that he was trapped there to the surprise of the purple-haired man and the redhead who was with his arms immobilized between if they are pressed against his torso. Izuku made a small leap to push Kirishima against Shinso so that Minda's spheres would hit them both, at which point he put his center of gravity in the air to avoid Araka's grip and then used the duct tape to roll Kirishima and Shinso, and then pull them out of the battle zone. As soon as Izuku touched the ground he could see how Mirio's fist began to rise, so he acted quickly and stepped forward to avoid the trajectory and just grabbed Uraraka by the shoulders and then jumped into the air along with her to save her from an attack from Tamaki that almost hit them both. In the air he was somewhat unprotected and held Yuraka in his arms while she seemed surprised to have been taken by surprise. Of course Jiru and Nejire's attacks were not long in coming, in addition to Dark Shadow rising in the air. The master hugged Yuraka to his chest and then began to plummet in the direction of the attacks, much to everyone's surprise. He simply turned his body to avoid the air and sound wave attacks, then leaned his body forward to descend a bit and pass under Dark Shadow to dodge a claw. The green-haired man in the air landed with a dizzy and blushing Yuraka in his arms who already had her wrists wrapped with duct tape. So Izuku left her on the ground and then jumped forward in the direction of Bakugu who was coming in his direction in the air along with Dark Shadow while on the ground Todoroki's ice approached. Izuku didn't wait a second to head at high speed towards them. Bakugu was smiling defiantly preparing a powerful explosion in his right arm. But his eyes widened when his teacher with one hand grabbed his face to throw him towards Dark Shadow who managed to dodge him to launch the attack of the green hair, who made a small leap to avoid Todoroki's ice and then planted his foot on a claw of the shadow being. From there he took momentum in the air to quickly fall into the middle of his students to move at a great speed, avoided Tamaki's attacks, deflected the movements of Siro, Mina, Ida and Suyu so that they were immobilized by Minda's spheres and then launched himself towards Shouji who tried to attack but was not fast enough and ended up with his torso and arms immobilized with tape and then he was thrown along with rest outside the boundaries of the area. It should be noted that this entire denouement has taken place in a span of five minutes and Kirishima, Shinso, Yuraka, Siro, Ida, Tsuyu, Mina and Shouji were already eliminated. It was certainly a display of impressive skill and the students of Class 3B were hallucinating. No doubt also Class 3A were surprised but could not afford to show it. The green-haired man grabbed a tentacle of Tamaki's to make it a chokehold against the ground, then watched as Mirio's arm pierced Tamaki's head without hurting him and was about to hit him in the face. So he only lifted Tamaki's head further and Mirio was forced to keep his intangible fist as he came out of the ground. Izuku immobilized Tamaki's arms and legs and then threw it at Nejire who surprised only had to catch him in the air. But she did not expect to see Izuku in front of her who took advantage of the opening in his defense to wrap the arms of the blue-haired man to Tamaki's body. Then the hero only dodged an explosion of Bakugu in the air that accidentally made Nejire lose the concentration of his quirk and finally fall along with Tamaki out of bounds. Izuku once dodged Bakugu's explosion, grabbed his arm to put him in a chokehold in midair as they both fell towards the ground where Todoroki, Mirio, Dark Shadow, Momo, and Kaminari were already waiting to act. The peace symbol released Bakugu and then took momentum from his back to launch himself towards Dark Shadow, where he made sure to dodge his claws and then reach the ground, where it was easy for him to pin Takoyami and then Toru, who thought he hadn't seen him. The green-haired man jumped backwards to dodge Momo's staff that had attacked him horizontally. He also noticed that behind him Todoroki was waiting to freeze him with his ice and Kaminari and Jiru had launched several attacks to hit him in the air, in addition to not forgetting Bakugu who was furiously approaching in the air propelling himself with his explosions. Seiko thought earnestly and with his arms crossed, watching the moment when they would finally get their first attack on their master. Izuku smiled slightly despite his bored look as he held up two fingers. Note number two, the moment you have your opponent on the ropes you must remember that it is at that precise moment that you must be more careful. No plan is infallible, he told his students who widened their eyes as they saw how their right foot was positioned to kick the ground. Everyone covered their eyes waiting for the impact that would surely shake the place and raise a lot of dust. But the green-haired man only deceived them and calmly touched the ground taking advantage of Todoroki lowering his guard so that his feet would not be frozen, then he crouched down dodging the attacks of Kaminari and Jiru that passed over him. Izuku before anyone made any move, took the initiative to run towards the tighter group and rolled Kaminari along with Minda to throw them. Then did the same with Kairuka and Momo to repeat the same procedure and take them out of the combat zone to the disbelief of those present. The time of the fight up to this point was 9 minutes and already Tamaki, Nejire, Takoyami, Toru, Kaminari, Mainta, Jiru and Momo had already been taken out as well. 
Within nine minutes of combat, 16 students from class were pinned down and only Seiko and the big three were left in the area. Izuku pulled himself together with one hand in a pocket of his robe while the other playfully tossed the duct tape. There are only four of you left, said the green-haired man to his four students who sharpened their gazes on him. It's amazing. D really you're completely surpassing them, exclaimed Setsuna really shocked and she wasn't the only one in that state. The rest of the B-class were stunned to see their rival class who had fallen one after the other despite how skilled they were. Izuku-kun couldn't rely on her physical strength for a while, so she started training a different kind of combat, Fayumi said with a small smile, drawing everyone's attention to her. He began to use purely his speed, agility and reaction ability to formulate plans and strategies in seconds to counter any movement against him, she explained calmly, watching as Izuku remained calm and analytical. That would require superhuman quickness of mind, exclaimed Kiruaro, astonished at what the young lady was saying. You must know the term the zone, right? Fayumi asked calmly, and several nodded their heads. Izuku after several months had managed to enter the zone and after more months of training he could control at will how long to stay in that state, she said calmly, remembering the times when she saw him train until he collapsed. Phew but only the best martial artists have managed to enter the zone a few times in their lives. See how is it that Midoriya sensei being so young can enter at will? Kendo asked, really shocked by the revelations that Todoroki's older sister was giving them. A man who is young in years can be old in hours if he hasn't wasted time, Fayumi replied to the B-class president without taking her eyes off Izuku. Every move she makes is planned in advance, each of her senses works as precisely as possible, and in her mind she studies a wide variety of strategies to choose one. She said while Iri was on her lap looking with admiration and amazement at her father. Minutes that turned into hours, hours to days, days to weeks, weeks to months, months to years and all that has been polished to this day. Everything you see is the result of constant hard work and determination, Fayumi said wisely and then turned his attention to how the fight would continue. Todoroki sent his ice in the direction of Izuku while Bakugu, angry and with a serious look, prepared several explosion attacks. Izuku only tilted his body to the side to feint and moved to the opposite side to dodge the explosions and ice, then made another feint to propel himself off the balls of his feet to throw directly at Mirio with a flying kick. Mirio narrowed his eyes earnestly and became intangible so that the attack would pierce him, causing Izuku to smile only slightly. Did you forget I said I wouldn't attack you? He asked, causing Mirio to open his eyes to realize that he was not his master's target, but Todoroki who was behind him and could not act in time to get to safety. Izuku regained the position in the air to manage to take out a trail of tape and stick it on Todoroki's chest to start using the momentum he had to start spinning around Shoto making his arms stick against his torso. If he used his fire he could free himself but he didn't and he struggled to free himself. The green-haired man grabbed him and threw him towards Bakugu who had planned to dodge him and let him fall, but his eyes widened when he saw that Deku had jumped up behind Todoroki to catch him off guard. The next thing the green-haired man did was to use the ribbon at just the right time to roll Bakugu along with Todoroki to stick them together and then drop them out of bounds. Izuku stood in the middle of the area and sighed a little bored, while in front of him was Mirio in a fighting position and behind him was Seiko. You can't do anything to me Midoriya, Sensei, but I'm going to have to work hard to do you some harm, Mirio said to his master with a defiant smile. I invite you to find out if I really can't do anything to you, Izuku said to his student who is the strongest student in the school, the one with the quirk complex of making him intangible and therefore invincible to physical attacks. Mirio narrowed his eyes and sank to the ground to then appear a few meters ahead with the momentum he took when he climbed while preparing his right fist to hit his master in the face. There was no way he would lose, if his master tried to hit him he only had to make his fist intangible, then the rest of his body and then he would make his fist tangible to impact the peace symbol. The meters that separated them were getting shorter and shorter. Izuku had a calm and calm look while Mirio approached smiling from the side and then threw his fist in the direction of the face of the green-haired man who remained silent while time began to pass more slowly. Izuku didn't plan to dodge the blow, he wouldn't shake his head, he wouldn't physically attack his student, he was just waiting, waiting for the right moment to act, he couldn't act even a second earlier than planned, everything had to be precise. Each time the fist was closer to his face, it was only inches away and there was just a little more to do. A little more, and there. Acted. T-L-A-F. The sound of loud applause echoed throughout the Gamma Gymnasium, and the students were stunned when they saw how Izuku had clapped his hands right in front of Mirio's face, who stood with her eyes wide open and her mouth open in shock, while her fist had stopped completely just millimeters from the green-haired man's face. Then the blonde fell to his knees to the ground unable to move his body and Izuku only crouched down in front of him to raise three fingers in an explanatory way. Note number three, if the enemy invites you to make your move it is for two reasons. The first is because he is confident that you will act badly, or the second is because he has a plan with which to gain the advantage. Izuku explained to his student serenely and then calmly wrapped his body with tape and Mirio did not activate his intangibility because of the shock, for he had just been the victim of a stunned applause. Izuku left the blonde there and with a small smile he regained the tranquility on his face and his bored and analytical look disappeared. 
He was just walking calmly in the direction of Seiko, who was standing still in place. It's not that she planned to make any kind of movement since in any case she would be useless against her teacher who would undoubtedly easily dodge and immobilize her. She only had to be imprisoned so that everyone would be eliminated from the test. I was honestly in complete shock at the ease with which they were crushed like ants. They just didn't stand a chance at first. The man in front of you. It is the symbol of peace. He had achieved the unthinkable by surpassing the achievements that All Might's once made. Izuku stopped in front of the clever girl in the monocle to smile at her slightly. I must honestly congratulate you and the rest of the class. Without a doubt the combat strategies you employed were ingenious and very well thought out, Izuku said to his students but kept his gaze fixed on Seiko. We haven't done anything, Sensei. You've completely defeated us, the young girl replied, closing her eyes with a small smile admitting her complete defeat. Defeat? I never said there would be any condition for you to lose, Izuku said smiling with amusement and causing the students of both classes to fall silent. Huh, was the collective sound that the students let out. I said that I would decide when to finish the test depending on the damage they did to me, therefore the only way for this to end is by my decision. Immobilizing them with tape was just a way to give me more freedom to move, the green-haired man clarified calmly before the impression of his class that they were perplexed even immobilized by the tape. P.Y., asked Momo, glued to Kayuka as they both looked at their teacher intrigued. You could perfectly at any time free yourself to try to attack me again, with Ashido's acid, with Dark Shadow or with Amajiki's quirk you could free yourselves to continue pressing. You were the only ones who associated leaving the zone with a defeat, that means you gave up, explained the green-haired man with complete calmness despite the fact that it only increased the surprise in both classes. In addition, although their teamwork was decent, I could notice how several lost their cool and committed actions that could hurt their teammates. They also had to consider more the strengths of each one. For example, Shouji was able to act in the front along with Amajiki and Kirishima instead of acting as a human shield. They were also able to give better use to Shinso's agility to pressure me along with Tagata so that your rocket could touch me he kept closing his eyes and crossing his arms. Let's be clear, the attacks of Bakugu, Hado, Todoroki and Kaminari with more freedom and power would have had more opportunity against me to inflict damage on me, also if Asu, Ida, Yuraka, Shinso, Kirishima, Hanta, Tagata, Ashido and Dark Shadow of Fumikage had attacked at the same time it is very likely that I did not have enough space to escape. Besides that the creation of Miss Yayurazu in conjunction with Miss Intelli's intelligence would have caused great inconvenience for me. I'm honestly a little disappointed, said the peace symbol making each time his class be submerged in a depressive aura as they bowed their heads, which only amused Monoma. Then we did the worst, said Yuraka a little down and with his head bowed. I wouldn't say that. The truth is that they did relatively well considering the standard skills of a professional hero. In a team effort they would undoubtedly defeat many villains. And individually they would surely be equal or even more skilled than the average hero, Izuku told his students sincerely to lift their spirits. Which seemed to work as the depressive aura slowly subsided. But I have something to say to you, Miss Intelli, said the green-haired man to his student in front of him. You, by the nature of your quirk, could not participate in the combat and could only think of strategy. If this were a chessboard then you would be considered the king, he said to the girl in front of him who was listening attentively. Miss Hagakure is not made for combat either but she still tried to help the rest. She should follow her example and she should also do her part. If the king does not advance first, how will his subjects follow him? He asked causing Seiko to widen her eyes a little. Being a heroine also implies jumping into action if necessary. You must set an example for your companions and be the first to show your face. The king must be the strongest of all. You must never bow your head or give up. When I approached you already lost any motivation to resist and attack me. That in real life would result in his death at the hands of the villains. He would say to her calmly. He understood that they were strong words but it was his duty as a teacher to teach her. I understand what Sensei is telling me. I should have acted even though the odds of beating him were 1.01%. Seiko replied lowering her head a little. Certainly she should have acted better and she should have fought until she couldn't take it anymore. She couldn't always stay behind everyone to see how they did the job. A low probability doesn't mean zero, he replied with a small smile. Just concentrate on this. You are a king with a brilliant mind who has in his possession 19 unique and useful pieces per individual. Your duty is to make the most of it to defeat a single piece. This game ends with my victory, but... In life, unlike chess, the game continues after checkmate, he told the girl in front of him who widened her eyes slightly while her cheeks flushed looking straight into her teacher's eyes. Yes, and thank you very much sensei, Seiko thanked, looking away shyly and Izuku smiled kindly at her. Daddy is invincible, no one can beat him, exclaimed Iri from the stands with excitement and a twinkle in her eyes while Fayumi smiled amused by the excitement of the little angel, Izuku when she heard her daughter turn to look at him to greet him slightly with one hand. Combat time, 12 minutes and 46 seconds. Class 3A, minus 20 divided by Deku Hero, 1. Landslide victory. A few minutes later, the entire 3A class was free and they were back in front of their teacher, who was looking at them calmly and with his hands in his pockets. I hope you all learned something from this test, Izuku told his students with a small smile. Yes, Sensei, was the collective response of everyone who still seemed to be discouraged, except for Seiko. 
who looked more blushing than anything else. Remember that you don't have to feel bad. There is a clear difference in experience between you and me. Although you may consider this as a failure, you must remember. Failure is a requirement for success. If you want to succeed quickly, double the number of your failures, he wisely said to his students who looked up to find the radiant figure of their teacher who encouraged them. Mistakes have three steps. Accept them, overcome them, and don't make them again. So take your mistakes from this time to make yourself stronger. After all, in a month we will have this test again to see your progress. I expect a noticeable improvement. Okay. Said Izuku to his students who showed more determined expressions while nodding their heads. Yes, sensei exclaimed the vast majority, led by Mirio who smiled broadly while at his sides were Todoroki and Bakugu. The mixed Peli calmly looked at the face of his master while Bakugu observed him with withering seriousness. Midoriya, exclaimed a male voice from the entrance of the gymnasium, and everyone turned to see how Kan was at the entrance along with Cementos. Hello Kan-san, Cementos-san, Izuku greeted him, smiling slightly and raising a hand as he and his colleagues approached. You held back a lot against your students, you should have gone with at least 10%. Scolded Vlad King sternly making both Class 3A and 3B have beads of sweat on their temples, if they didn't even have a chance with a 5% quirk. They didn't want to imagine what it would have been like with the double power of the number one hero. Yeah, yeah, this was just a small test to see what they are capable of, Izuku said to his fellow professor with a small smile to calm him down and then turned to look at Cementos. Cementos, san please I would like you to start preparing the place for them to start training. Aizawa-san is on his way to support me, said the green-haired man to the cement hero who nodded his head and approached the field to begin molding it and take advantage of repairing the craters caused by Bakugu. Daddy won, exclaimed Uri happily as she ran over to hug one leg of Izuku who smiled softly while Fayumi also approached with a small smile. We'd better leave to let them train, and soon nap time will be over and midnight sensei will have more things to do, Fayumi said with a small smile and really in a good mood having seen Izuku fight amicably again after so many years. Say goodbye, Hiri, the Todoroki said to the little girl who was still hugging her father's leg. The albino woman took off the hug to hold her bento and open it to take out a fresh piece of apple to offer it to her father with a sweet smile. Here's your prize, Daddy, Hiri said, being too tender for this world, and several of those present had an overload in their minds as they put their hands to their hearts. Izuku crouched down at her daughter's height to smile at her and then grabbed the piece with her teeth and then ate it. Thank you, Uri. I'm going to look for you later and let's go with the grandparents so you can tell them how it went today, okay? He said to the girl who nodded her head happily. Yes, Daddy, I have to tell Granny to help me find a mom, Hiri said to her father innocently and causing Izuku and the rest of the girls in the place to tense up and blush again. Please don't tell Grandma, Izuku asked lowering her head and Uri smiled amused and then approached Fayumi to hold her hand, which woke the young woman from her nerves. Then Fayumi headed to the exit taking Uri's hand who said goodbye to Izuku with a big smile and shaking her little hand in which she held her white bento. She planned to tell all her friends how great her dad is and how he played with his students. Kan stood in front of his students to look at them seriously. All right, all of you, you're going to have extra homework for tomorrow for making me wait so long. I hope I don't hear any complaints, Vlad King said to his students who bowed their heads. No, sensei, said Class 3B, with no intention of contradicting their strict teacher, who would only increase the task if they dared to say something. Very good class, let's go, exclaimed Ken and then walked towards the exit while his class followed him from behind. At least Class 3B witnessed the difference in level between them who were students and that hero in the number one position. Both in combat and mentality, no doubt it had been very educational to have observed and listened to him at least a little. If Class would have the symbol of peace as their teacher, then they, too, would have to make an effort not to be left behind. Izuku only turned around to see his 20 students who were chatting with each other, which caused Izuku to smile slightly wistfully. It was kind of weird to be in the position where he would be the one who would encourage them to improve both as heroes and people. I wouldn't say he felt pressured, but he did feel a little insecure if the way he teaches is the right one. But he decided to ease his mind and then be more encouraged. Either way, he would also learn how to be a better teacher for his students over time. The important thing for the moment was to think of some way to convince Yuri not to tell her mother to find her some love interest. She had enough being father, master, and hero at the same time and that now love joined the equation didn't sound very good to him. All right, everyone, let's get started. Izuku told his students with a big smile and his hands in his pockets and then went with them to start the real training. They still have a lot to learn and he still had several problems to deal with in the future. His days as a teacher were just beginning. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku was father and teacher. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Masasin Mays for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works. The link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Deku Fanfic for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.